Hello. What's up, what's up? Happy almost Friday. <laughs> hey Tushi, what's up? Yeah, I don't know how to make sushi. I've never made sushi, but I bought like a, a thing. Like I have everything basically. So we will attempt to make sushi, hopefully. If we manage to set up the cam, which I don't know yet. I haven't done a kitchen stream in this apartment ever. So we'll see if that works. <laughs> Yeah, I, I want to be. I'm watching so much K drama nowadays that uh, I got this urge to figure out how to do sushi so I can feed myself with sushi only. <laughs> thank you so much for two years, Bishi. What's up? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Any sushi chat? <laughs> Thank you so much for 16 months, Jens. Danke schön. Danke, danke, danke. <laughs> yeah, the sushi and rice is really good. I mean, they do eat that in Korea, right? Or in Japan and like everywhere. They sometimes just eat rice balls. Hello, new friend. Right? Welcome. Like, it's just like a ball of rice. Like sushi rice. The sticky one. Yeah, they just eat that without anything. Well, with, with um, soy sauce or something, I guess. Thank you so much for Prime Sub, uh, little baby. Thank you so, so much. Welcome. Wait, my stream deck doesn't work. Question mark. I, I pressed the intro button, but nothing works. Let me figure this out. Welcome to the land of the magic chicken lady. Thanks for the Prime Sub. Um, the Sow Band. <laughs> Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Ah, oh, let's see. What is going on in Miami, as Brian would say. Man, Brian is rubbing off on me. <laughs> oh, I think OBS is like not working properly. Oh, whatever, we're just gonna manually roll the intro. <laughs> like imagine having to press buttons manually instead of using my stream deck, unreal. <laughs> so again, a danke <laughs> Alright. So before we play some beta ourselves, I was thinking we quickly go over some changes because apparently there was like an outrage about the priest feedback post. So I figured we're gonna take a look at that and see what it's all about. Why people are so upset. I mean, people are upset all the time, but you know what I mean. Also, did you see that we can give away beta keys soon? This streamer here, your favorite streamer, is going to be able to give away beta keys soon. <laughs> From Monday to Tuesday. Next week. I think we're going to do one Twitter giveaway and one stream giveaway. That's, that's the plan. <laughs> Can't drink out. God damn it. Brian is taking away my viewers. Blizzard notes on endgame testing realm. Ooh, okay, interesting. Yeah, pre-made characters are now available for beta, which is really nice. But where's the feedback post for Priest? I don't see it. Is it not new? Is it an old post? Hmm. I don't see it. What was everyone talking about then? Now I'm confused. Everyone has been talking about this priest thing. Uh, 
No, I don't think there's a list of um, beta add-ons that work. I don't think so. Just download the add-ons and then see for yourself, I guess. That's what I do, at least. <laughs> oh, I found it, I found it. Okay, first we look at this. Oh my god. I have to manually enable this. Wait, why doesn't this work? Oh, second cam, that's the wrong thing. Second monitor. There we go. Alright, so... We've opened the test realm Valdrakan for endgame testing, and it's here that we'll look for focus feedback and bug reports on endgame content. Testers on this realm are limited to only Stormwind and Orgrimmar, and can proceed using max level character hand plates. To start with testing Solo Shuffle, in future weeks we'll make this the realm where we test professions, mythic plus, and raid content. Okay, so for now it's only PvP, which means that I'm not gonna do that just yet. But I'm excited to test Mythic Plus and Ray content. And I think I'm also going to test Professions, just to see uh, what they're all about. Oh, really, Vitsawan? Oof. Well, hopefully you win the giveaways then that I have coming. Maybe we can rig it a little bit. <laughs> Alright, and now this is like the priest post that people have been talking about. So let's read this. Greetings, priests. Today we're shining some light. I see what they did there. <laughs> On decisions we've made for priests over the past few weeks for Dragonfly. First, we want to share thoughts on how things are shaping up overall, and then go into some specific spells that we're reading feedback about. So just one thing, and I know I shouldn't be salty about this, because it, it's good that other classes are getting so much feedback. Like, it's, it's very good. I'm, I'm a big fan of this, right? But... It also makes me a little bit salty that so many classes are getting so much feedback and Moonkin doesn't even have updated talents yet. We don't even have updated talents yet and we already have PTR, pre-patch, beta and like, like when are we gonna get our talents? <laughs> the worst part about this is that there's just no way like, if they don't release a tree that is perfect, then we're just fucked, honestly. Because our tree right now, our talent tree, is so bad. So they will have to rework the whole tree somehow and make it good. And it has to be perfect. Like, first try, basically. Because there's no way they're going to rework it again. Because it took them, like, four months to rework the first tree. <laughs> so I don't think they're going to rework it again. No. Who asked? Shut the fuck up, D3. <laughs> Moonkins are people too, okay? <laughs> All right. Number of active spells. We agree priests have too many active spells, okay? Wow. That's an issue, I guess. Well, we think there will be more to assess as the expansion plays out. The first spell that comes to mind is Shadow Ment, feeling unnecessary with Flash Heal being available to all priests. Instead of Shadow Ment as a talent that overrides Flash Heal, we are working towards removing the spell. We realize that losing secondary healing school lockout may not sit well with Dissonant Priest in PvP, but we are happy with this direction overall. While no plans are in place right now, we are also discussing mind games and power where life is contributing to the number of active spells. I have a suggestion. What if... They remove PI. I know. Completely unpopular opinion. <laughs> no one has been talking about this, I know. I just came up with this out of nowhere. <laughs> anyway, class tree. Overall, we feel the class tree is in a good spot. As mentioned above, there are too many active spells. And we're looking to pull back on that. For Shadow, the class tree has shaped out well. We're less happy about how many notes can feel mandatory for holding disc. And this is something we'll be looking into. Okay. What does that mean? We'll be looking to improve over time. How much time? <laughs> anyway, disc. We'll continue to monitor our feedback surrounding the changes we've made to renew and power shield. 
Currently, we do not have plans to change this and think it is playing well. Okay. Historically, discipline has revolved heavily around penance. We want to allow for builds that are centered around penance, but also open opportunities for other spells. Okay. Such as smite and power word shield. We look forward to your feedback on if on if this is felt with the tree tuning us that. For Shadow Covenant, we're looking to take away the downside so that it encourages shadow spells. It doesn't discourage holy spells. Okay. Holy. Light Weaver is our alternative sound to flash concentration. Weaving between flash and heal is fun, but wound up wound up feeling like a maintenance buff. We believe having a back and forth between the spells with stacks to improve situation. Oh yeah. When it comes hey, to Xanchi, non honest rest restitution. Thanks for the Prime Sub, Superplex. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. Uh, we are excited to keep the effect the effect around for Holy Priest. We're oh, blah blah blah. We know adding this was not with the blah 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 blah. Well, we have no plans to disable the effect on you. We're discussing ways to change it. Okay. Sure. Now that the tree has been in front of players for a couple of weeks, we are reasonably happy with what we have, with room to grow in the future. Our initial thoughts on void form being optional is something we stand by. How to accomplish this while continuing to support Voidform and improve its gameplay is a challenge we want to continue to discuss and work on. Yeah, that's very interesting, like making Voidform like an optional thing. That is definitely weird. I wonder if that will actually work. Like having such a huge thing that is part of that really changes your rotation a lot and they want it to not be because the, the difficulty with this is going to be that most people will just play it or not play it depending on if it's better or not right i guess that's the issue like it's really hard to create something like this and it actually be optional because let's be honest here if if it's better then everyone will just play this. <laughs> right? But I guess it depends. Maybe it fulfills a niche, but I wouldn't know which one necessarily. Like which niche would void form actually fulfill? I don't know. I guess they can I mean they could technically figure it out. They could make void form be something like, I don't know. Currently, we're happy with where we have landed with Void Eruption competing with Dark Ascension, so there's not too many cooldown spells. With that said, Dark Ascension is visually exciting, but we feel it is currently lacking in identity. What does that mean? Like, when you when you think about identity, then what do you... Th what do you... Isn't, isn't the visual almost, like, a big part of the identity? Like, for example, Full Moon for Moonkin. I would argue that a lot of people think that has a lot of identity, right? I think a lot of people think that Full Moon is like the spell that will, you know, it's like a druid spell, you know, like a Moonkin spell. But then I don't think that Full Moon really interacts with the Moonkin rotation a lot at all. I think it's very boring. Like you press a button and you gain astral power. If you ignore the visual, like just if you don't think about the actual animation, then you're literally just pressing a spell and it gives you 40 astral power. Right? Which in my opinion is not like insanely interesting, you know, it's, it's pretty boring, I would say. So would that warrant full moon to be changed? I don't know. So th this sentence seems a bit weird for me. Like, I don't know what they mean with identity. Because in my opinion, if something is visually exciting, then that's all the identity it needs. It's the same with um, Goldrin. Do you guys uh, remember in Legion, this is going to be a dragonfly talent for a moonkin, or at least maybe it is. Uh, in Legion, if you use star search, there was a chance that a wolf, like a ghost wolf, spawned out of your character and flew into your target, 
doing 30% or something of the damage of the Star Surge again. Which has, like, literally doesn't change your rotation at all. Like, it has nothing to do with your rotation whatsoever. But people still really liked it because it was visually interesting. Like, you saw this, like, ghost wolf spawn out of your character and people liked it a lot. Even though it, like, it, it didn't change anything. It was a complete passive ability that you couldn't, uh, like, you, you didn't play around it. You couldn't manipulate it. Uh, you couldn't change if it happened or didn't happen. Like, you did nothing with it. The fact if you had power of Goldrin or didn't have it didn't change anything, right? So, but still, so many people liked it because it looked cool. <laughs> so I think uh, something looking cool is, like, everything people want. <laughs> Thank you so much for eight months, Bram I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Welcome back. And thanks for 23 months, Venbo. How are you doing today? But anyway, we're discussing changes like Dark Ascension being more rotationally transformative while active or having a different cooldown than a Void Eruption. So its use cases over Void Eruption are more clear. We don't have plans to make major changes to either spell for Dragonflight launch, but they will be on our radar for the future. Hmm, okay. <laughs> I feel like, um, okay, I don't want to like super doomsday this, but I'm going to, like, it is very possible that they are going to change the way they do things in Dragonflight, but if we know anything from the past three expansions, then we know that they will not rework core abilities within an expansion like they just do not do that just because people are not happy with it it just doesn't happen they, they usually only change core abilities and core spells before the expansion comes out and then maybe like at the very start of the expansion they might change a thing or two but then they're done like they will never ever rework a spell completely or a baseline ability completely throughout an expansion they just don't do that but i do think that there is a possibility for that changing in dragonflight because i think a big reason why they didn't do that in the past three expansions was because we had so much borrowed power that changing a base ability affected so many other things there was like a huge kind of like endeavor to actually do that right like, if you think about Shadowlands, if you change the way Starfall works for Moonkin, then you have to change Starfall, and then you have to change the talents revolving around Starfall, then you have to change all of the conduits that revolve around Starfall, all of the legendaries, all of the soul binds, all of the covenant spells, you know what I mean? All of the tier sets, blah, 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 right? So I guess because of this kind of, like, everything was kind of, like, intertwined and connected uh, with, like, a million different borrowed power effects in the last three expansions. But maybe in Dragonflight that's not going to be the case. But it still kind of is, honestly, because we have these talent trees, and the talent trees are basically just a bunch of borrowed power effects within one borrowed power, right? Well, I guess talents aren't really borrowed power, but you know what I mean. So one talent tree for one class just has a lot of borrowed powers from before in the tree. So if if they release um, a Moonkin talent tree, then if they want to rework a basic spell, then they will also have to change the talents, which might cause issues with the pathing and so on, right? So I do think that I'm not sure if that's really going to change in Dragonflight. Because, yeah... I don't know. Changing a talent is one thing, right? I'm sure they can do that easily. Like when Dragonfly comes out, surely they can change a talent here or there. That's going to be totally fine. But reworking a base spell is going to be much more complicated because then you have to change the talents as well to match the base change. So I am not... I'm honestly not... Uh, necessarily confident that they will start doing that all of a sudden so if your class base spells or 
basic rotation, basic whatever sucks when Dragonfly comes out, you're probably stuck with it for the whole expansion. I'm go if, I, if I would have to take a guess. <laughs> Unless it's like really broken and people or people really hate it. Those are the only two things, and Bliss has shown that its system team is massive. Well, yeah, but what do you mean only two things? Like changing a whole talent tree is a lot of work, right? So doing that in the middle of an expansion might be a bit messed up for them. But then again, what else are they going to do anyway? They only really have to work on tier sets. So maybe they have the time, who knows. Anyway, Mind Spike and Mind Flex coexisting is something we're going to try but are wary of. Shadow has many spells suppressed rotationally. This isn't helping that. At the same time, being able to build your own Shadow Priest is a goal with the situation we really account. Silence. We understand that Holy and Disc are the two specs without access to an interrupt, either baseline or in a talent tree. We also realize Shadow has Silence in their tree, which adds to the number of non-throughput nodes in their tree. With that said, we are not adding Silence to the Priest class tree. Having access to an interrupt is not something we view as necessary for all specs. In PvP, Holy and Disc are already provide valuable control to the team, and additionally having Silence would provide more control than we're comfortable with. This is especially true with how much control is becoming available across all classes in Dragonfly. Okay, so a lot of people are upset about this, and I understand why. Because if only two specs in a game do not have access to interrupt, that seems a bit weird. It's like, why? I think what happened is that a lot of the hybrid specs got, got interrupt because they're hybrid specs. Right, like it makes sense that some of the interrupts for hybrid classes are in the in the class tree, um, and yeah, I mean, which which people got interrupt that didn't have interrupt before? It's really just healers, right? Like literally every single spec in the game already had an interrupt except healers, and shaman already had one. So it was really only mistweaver, Rester druid, holy paladin, and the the priests, right? That didn't have it. So some healers got it and priests just didn't. Which, I don't know. I personally don't care as much. Just kind of like, whatever. <laughs> I understand it's an issue for PvP though. Like, I understand if PvP players are complaining. I don't necessarily understand why PvE players are complaining though. Because, honestly, it's not that important. <laughs> I don't think the healer having an interrupt is that good for PvE. Like, I don't know. <laughs> for raiding, it's completely irrelevant, in my opinion. Because in a raid, you have so many interrupts. You don't need your healers to have interrupt as well. And in a plus, it's kind of nice to have interrupt. But it's also not necessary. Almost never. There's almost never a dungeon where you need like a million interrupts, right? It does happen, but it's pretty rare, so I don't know. I don't think a PvE player should necessarily care about this that much. For PvP, I do understand. But the thing for PvP is that I would comp I personally, if I was a PvP player, would complain the opposite way. Like, I wouldn't complain that priests don't have interrupts, I would complain that the other healers do have one, right? In my, in my opinion, it's much worse for PvP that the healers get an interrupt. Because, <laughs> uh, I don't know, at some point you're just never going to cast a spell anymore. Because whenever you play PvP against a Resto Shaman, you know the pain as a caster or as a healer. Because... If they play a Rasta Shaman, they have three interrupts usually. Two damage dealers have an interrupt, plus a Rasta Shaman has an interrupt. And then uh, it, it already feels kind of bad, right? And now all the other healers also gain an interrupt, 
which just seems like a nightmare to me, honestly. <laughs> and if you think about it, a lot of a lot of melee specs are already pretty good in arena compared to ranged. And I feel like this is just gonna emphasize this even more. Because the ranged are gonna have trouble getting any spells out if everyone just has an interrupt. <laughs> so I honestly if I was a PvP player, I would prefer if no healer has an interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> Having healing priest be the only spec without kicks just feels terrible. Either give it to all healers or none. I don't know. I think it's fine. I personally am not that concerned about it. Because... Shaman already had an interrupt, so the only healers who gained an interrupt is Resta Druid. And Resta Druid has to go into cat form to interrupt, which means uh, that it's like at least somewhat of a hassle. Like it's not like winchier, right? A Resta Shaman's interrupt is super OP. Like it's a really short cooldown and it's on range and you don't have to switch into any form to use it, right? So Resta Shaman interrupt still stays pretty OP compared to the other healer interrupts. Because if you think about Paladin Interrupt, Holy Pella, and Mistweaver, they both have to be in melee. So they have already like a little bit of a downside that they cannot interrupt from range. And a Raster Druid has to go into cat form to interrupt, which is also a little bit of a downside, right? So I think um, it's still somewhat balanced when it comes to interrupts for healers. Right? Shaman still has like the most broken interrupt out of all healers, which has already been the case before. And then we have two more melee interrupts from Mistweaver and, and uh, Holy Pala, which is, you know, if you don't want to get interrupted, it's just don't be in melee. <laughs> and then Rastodrid has to go cat for him, which is like, yeah. I think he's okay. Yeah, and then you also have to consider that they need to talent into it. And for for a lot of the healers that want to get the interrupt, you have to take some weird pathing in your class tree. That's also something that you have to consider, of course. Then Vault of uh, Heavens. Mm. Upon further consideration, Vault of Heavens is almost always more useful than Leap of Faith. What is Vault of Heavens? Is it jumping to your target? Is it the uh, Druid Wild Charge caster form? Okay. Leap of Faith is one of the more fun interactions in WoW. It changes your perspective on the battlefield. You're always ready to react to save someone. And of course, it has some clever use to get your friends killed. If you allow for the choice, the choice is clear. Or it would have to nerf Vault of Heavens down to something that won't feel very powerful. Fantasy of the priest sleeping to their target doesn't match our expectation for a priest either. So instead separate body and soul from angelic feather for a little extra movement support and kept leap of faith as standalone. Wait, so are they removing this? So they're removing this? Or am I not understanding this? Yeah, I also think the interrupt thing is uh, being blown out of proportions a little bit. Because if you guys remember, um, this used to be how it worked before. Like, some people don't know this. But back in um, Cataclysm, up until Cataclysm, um, most healers had an interrupt, except Priest. So it was the this exact thing they want to do now was already in the game before. Because in Cataclysm, a druid had Skull Bash, Rasta Druid, um, Paladin had Interrupt, um, Shamans had Interrupt, and Priest did not. 
So it was basically the same thing. And no one complained about it back then, which obviously it's a long, long time ago. So, <laughs> but yeah, it wasn't really that big of a deal because most of the time you didn't really need to interrupt. In PvP, it's a different story, of course. Like, PvP is obviously, uh, you know, you definitely do use your interrupt in PvP, of course. But yeah, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. That is true, sis. The interrupt thing isn't about top level or organized play. It's a bigger deal for pucks and lower keys where you can't count on others to do it. Yeah, but... So it's just better then, right? Like, here's the thing. People... I honestly think that people need to, like... Stop complaining about literally everything. Because if you're saying that it's a good thing to have an interrupt as a healer then it's, this is literally only a positive change, right? When you really think about it. Because what did we have before? What did we have in Dragonflight? No healer had an interrupt other than Shaman, right? That's what we have. And now in Dragonflight, three more healers get an interrupt. So we're gaining interrupts. We're not losing anything. Pe people are always... It's like, oh, they see this other class, get this, and then I want it as well. But you have to think about the overall picture that it's like, it's a, isn't it a good thing to gain things? <laughs> right? Because that just means that three of the healers, they got an interrupt, which is nice for you. That, like you just said, that it's nice to have an interrupt in an plus dungeon, right? So now you have it. If you play a priest, you don't have it, but that, it didn't take anything away from you because you didn't have to interrupt before, right? So it's like, it's really not that big of a deal, I, th I feel like. But if everyone gets it and you don't, that just feels bad. But what do you need an interrupt for, really? Like, you also have to uh, think of the fact that it actually can be annoying to have an interrupt. I honestly think that it could technically be annoying to have an interrupt as a healer because we have the new talent system now. So here's the thing, right? In the past, um, when we already had the situation in Cataclysm, we already had the situation where Paladins had an interrupt, Mystery, um, Rest of Druids had an interrupt, uh, Shamans had an interrupt, and Priests didn't have an interrupt, right? We already had this exact situation. But back then, everyone else had a baseline interrupt as well. Now in Dragonflight, we get talents. So damage dealers technically can not take an interrupt. Like there's a possibility for damage dealers to not take their interrupt, right? And I have a feeling that there might be some situations where the healers are forced to take an interrupt and the damage dealers do not because the healers have the option and the damage dealers might lose some damage for taking the interrupt or whatever, right? And then it kind of sucks to have an interrupt as a healer. Like in that situation, I would prefer to be the healer that doesn't have an interrupt. Because I don't want to have an extra responsibility added to me just because the damage dealers want to take a different talent for something else, right? So I'm honestly not that upset about it all the time, right? Sometimes having a certain utility is not that good. Because if you have the certain utility, you're also kind of forced to, to, to use it, right? Which might take away from the things that you want to do. So having utility is not always the greatest thing. For example, I'm going to give you the greatest example. BM Hunters. <laughs> BM Hunters have the greatest utility of all time. They can run around without losing any damage, right? But for the longest time, it's not really a thing anymore now. But uh, like from MO MOP... And like Cataclysm and stuff, casters used to be really mobile. Like casters used to be um, barely able to move without losing any da uh, without losing a lot of damage, right? If you look at some old kill videos, you can see how casters were completely mobile compared to what they have now. Nowadays, casters are super super mobile, but in the past, casters were not able to to do anything really. But BM hunters were they could just do whatever they wanted, right? But what happened was that BM Hunters always had to do the jobs in every single raid 
the M hunters had to do every single job that there needed to be done, right? I remember on every single bus, it's like, oh, someone has to pick this up and bring it over there. And it was immediately said that the BM hunters have to do it. BM hunters always had to do everything because they lost no damage from moving, right? So yes, you have the mobility and you have an upside because you can cast on moving, but you have the downside because because you have this utility, you constantly have to do these bad jobs, right? Which, you know, sometimes it's not the greatest thing. Like maybe you don't always want to do the shit jobs, you know? <laughs> maybe you would rather just stand still and cast once in a while. <laughs> Thanks for 15 months, Chris, what's up? I love running around. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, I, I think people are just like exaggerating a little bit. And if it doesn't work out, like if it actually becomes an issue that healers have interrupt, uh, they just take it away again. I honestly don't think all the healers should have interrupts. In fact, I wish no healer would have an interrupt. <laughs> but uh, it's better that so at least not everyone has it then, in my opinion. Anyway... Shining Force. This spell was deliberately removed in Dragonfly. Powerful spells being removed can cause frustration. However, the amount of control available across all classes in Dragonfly is causing concern. On top of this, the prevalence of knockbacks is already increasing in Dragonfly PvP, and knockbacks can be most influential control effects on the area. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I, <laughs> I honestly think there's a pretty big concern that things are going to be completely out of control in Dragonflight because of because of these talent trees, giving classes so many things. Because I, I think Blizzard little, uh, was a little bit under pressure to give people new abilities or bring back old abilities through these talent trees because people were complaining that there, aren't in, there isn't enough new stuff. Because people felt like they're... T they're taking things away from them, right? People were saying, oh, my class can do all of these things right now. And then Dragonflight, all of these things are taken away and I have to use my talent points to get them back. And that feels bad. And people complain about this. And I totally understand the sentiment behind it. Like, I understand the sentiment, right? But I think because of this complaint, Blizzard kind of felt forced to add new things to the talent tree that you did not have before, right? Or to to bring back things that were pruned before. And I think that honestly created a situation where classes have so much more stuff than they had before that it might honestly be a balancing concern. New things are good though? Well, yeah, new things are good. But you have to understand that it can cause an issue, right? Like if every class has like three new utility spells, then all of a sudden every single class has like five billion utility spells, which is obviously gonna cause some issues, right? So I wonder if that's gonna be a problem, especially for PvP. Like imagine if every single spec has like five different hard to cease like everyone has a stun and an interrupt and a knockback and like grip and you know what i mean like that just causes some issues in my opinion so i personally don't mind it if they take some stuff away I wouldn't mind if they take some stuff away from Druid, honestly, because I think Druid has way too much utility. Huh? Like, no joke. They, they should take away some stuff from Druids. <laughs> the amount of utility we have is kind of crazy. It is a bit weird that they take away Shining Force, because I feel like there's so many other classes that have much more utility than a Priest. Because Priests, in my opinion, are one of the classes that have 
not as much utility as some other classes. Right? Because, I mean, what does priest really have? If you don't consider PI. Like, they have grip, mind soothe, fear, mind control. And shining force, I guess. And now they're taking away shining force. Chest size, I guess, as well, yeah. So, yeah. I'm only talking about utility. I'm not talking about stamina buff or anything. Should I take away Shining Force? A bit interesting. I guess the thing with Priest is that they have very unique utility, yeah? Because it is a little bit of a difference if you have, like, a utility that so many other classes have as well, or if you have a utility that no other class has. Because Mind Sooth, for example... Only priests have it. Grip, only priests have it. Mind control, only priests has it, right? So I guess priests has pretty unique utility that no other class has. Shekel and that, yeah. So maybe, maybe it makes sense because of that. But then at the same time, yeah, they have all of this unique ut utility, but it's also very niche. Like a lot of this utility is so niche that you never use it in a certain... Uh, environment, right? Mind Sooth, for example, you never need it in raids. You also never need it in plus, uh, in uh, PvP. Yeah. I think Mind Sooth is a very specific in plus utility. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Then Spectral Guys. We've read feedback about a desire for the return of Spectral Guys. We discussed this ability early on and decided against it, and our stance has not changed. We do not want priests entering self, especially in PvP. Thank the Lord. As he removes the priest from the target and focus frame and cures frequently, hunters, strokes, and mages already do this often enough. Yes, thank you. <laughs> we don't need more self classes. In screen form, as a disorient, we don't think it is very compelling as a replacement to psychic scream. What we anticipate is desired is the Eastern version of the spell, but we are not planning to bring that forward. And am I going to decide against adding this one back to... Uh-huh, uh-huh. If everyone has an AoE stun, then it's not going to feel special to have one in the first place. Yeah, this is exactly what I was talking about earlier, right? If they bring back too much utility, then... Every, uh, every class is like a billion utility spells, and it's weird. I personally much prefer if... Um, unique utility... Like, I, I prefer having more unique utility uh, across all classes... And then having um, some classes have this, like, more standard utility, but not, like, everyone having it, right? Like, stuff like AoE stun, um, single target stun, what else is unique? Uh, what else is pretty common? I guess those are the most two common things, right? Single target stun and AoE stun is, like, the most common utility, I guess. Well, and interrupt. Everything else, well, and dispel. But that's a healer thing. Yeah, it's not a... Oh, offensive dispel. Offensive Dispel is also something that so many classes can do. For similar reasons as Silence, we will not be adding Dispersion to the Priest class tree. Healing Priests are understandably on the weaker side of the defensive spectrum, but our answer to that isn't to bring Dispersion to the class tree. Between Desperate Prayer, Pirate Shield, Angelic Bulwark, Translucent Image, and Spell Warding, we feel Priests are in an okay spot. We've also increased the damage reduction effect from Translucent Image to 10% and separate Phantasm from it. Yeah, the thing with survivability is also a bit weird. I wonder how that's going to turn out in Dragonflight. Because there's some classes that honestly seem like just way too tanky. Like, I don't even think that... Because this is the same thing again, right? We see that, like, for example, Warlocks and Shamans, for example, they gain a lot of defensive utility. And now other classes also want it. But in my opinion, that shouldn't be how you look at it. Like, instead of, instead of every class being tanky, I think it would be much better to, to make the class that are tanky less tanky. I don't think it's good if every class has, like, a lot of defensive utility. I think that's really bad for the game. Because if every class has a lot of defensive utility, you just, uh, you can cheese a lot of stuff. Like, you can, you can cheese things all the time. So I think 
instead of giving everyone like an immunity or a big DR or whatever, I think it's better to give classes that have a shit ton of DR just to remove some of it. Like Warlocks, for example, in my opinion, they're way too tanky in their new Dragonfly tree. Just remove some of this stuff. Like, it's honestly insane. <laughs> like, I, I don't know what they were thinking with the Warlock class tree, but it's just... I don't think the solution is to make everyone as tanky as Warlocks. I think the solution is to make Warlocks less tanky. <laughs> More likes are fine. <laughs> Cause I mean Evoker also got this this like group wide spell that gives that is basically like a defensive spell. A defensive DR kind of group wide buff, which I don't know, I, I'm just a bit worried that we're gonna completely cheese some some bosses again, like we did in kind of similar how we did in Sanctum of Domination, if you guys remember, where we just completely ignored certain mechanics and just stacked a bunch of DR on top of each other to survive it. Specifically, Keltusad was a boss like that. <laughs> Where you just waited around for three minutes to get your cooldowns back, do your defensive cooldowns. <laughs> and have a feeling that something similar to that might happen again if everyone gets a million DR spells. Especially when we have Hymn of Hope or whatever it's called from Priest that like reduces the DR, or reduces the cooldown of it. And yeah, I don't, I don't think, I personally think it's okay if some classes are tankier and some classes are less tanky. Like, I, th I think it's fine. I don't think every class has to be the same tankiness. Because the thing that I talked about just now with the cheesing of abilities doesn't work if half the classes are not able to cheese it, right? So let's say you have, uh, it's time for paint again. Like, let's say there's a raid mechanic or something that does uh, a lot of AoE damage. If every single... Like, if every single um, class has a, a lot of defensive abilities, then they all just save their utility and then you all survive it. So let's say there's a spell or an AoE that does 100% of your damage, of your HP and damage, right? Now, if everyone... As a lot of defensives, they all survive. And you just cheese the mechanic, right? But if only this class and this class can survive it, then you can't cheese it, right? Because then this person dies and this person dies and this person dies, right? So I think having some classes that are tankier and some classes that are less tanky kind of balances out this, this thing. Of course, people are always complaining about other people being tankier. The only solution to that would be no one being tanky, right? So having a little bit of a discrepancy between tankiness, between classes, is totally fine in my opinion. Because otherwise you're just gonna cheese literally every mechanic and roll with it, I guess. <laughs> Alright, let's play some beta. Oh wait, that's the wrong button. So, I can't create level 70 characters, right? Except on this realm. And in that realm... I can only do solo shuffle, right? <laughs> Good start. <laughs> Beautiful. I would like to play the invisible character, please. Yeah, you can only be in Storm in an Oregon, yeah. <laughs> Your DK lost a lot of weight. <laughs> Alright, let's see what happens. <sighs> yeah, 
Yeah, it's level 70. I'm... <laughs> yeah, big cheese. Oh, they changed the, the, the unit frames now. Wait, only... Wait, they only changed the unit frames from my target, but not the enemy target? And what is this? It's an I... Oh, I think it's shadowed unit frames. It's an add-on. It's bugged. Yeah, it wasn't Adam. But yeah, you see how <laughs> my target is changed? My target frame? Uh, my player frame, but my target frame isn't. <laughs> okay, I quickly want to see if Starfall sacks on, on this server. I think it does. Oh my god, I'm, I have just no astral power. I don't even have Moonkin form. <laughs> Wait, I need to spec Starfall. I don't even have it. Okay, wait. I hate that you have to spec everything. some spells. So, did they already change this? Oh yeah, they did! So I can enter Lunar again now. So Starfall should be stepping as well, I'm sure. Starfall? No, it's a cooldown. <laughs> oh, it's because of Stellar Drift. Of course, I forgot. I forgot that this is a completely dead talent now, that you're not allowed to spec. Until they rework our talents. again. Starfall? Starfall? Ooh, okay, and it's also two individual buffs. And it's, it's not targetable. I wonder if they're just gonna keep it this way? I don't think- I'm honestly not too happy about them keeping Starfall this big radius. Unless they make it, um, unless they give us another spender, like... So many people complained about the Starfall targeting being really bad. And I, I do understand where people are coming from. But I just have such a bad feeling that if they keep it this big radius like we had it in Shadowlands, then, in my opinion, we need another spender for stacked AoE. Because if they keep Starfall as our only spender, and then they make it stackable, then it's... How, how are they supposed to balance it? Like, they can't. 
I just have such a bad feeling about this. Uh. And then the problem is, if Starfall stays stackable, but we gain another sp stacked um, AoE spender, then we would rarely ever even press Starfall, and then the fact that it stacks doesn't even matter that much. Because <laughs> almost all AoE situations are stacked AoE situations. So... I don't know, I don't know. The only thing that I can think of is that they are adding... Um, something like... What is it called? That conduit that we had in BFA? It was not conduit, it was an asteroid trait. The asteroid trait that we had in BFA. What was it called? Daggers. Something dagger. Like the only thing I can imagine is that they give us that as a talent. It's like Shadow, where unless you spec into Searing Nightmare, you only have one spender. I mean, only having one AoE spender is not necessarily the issue. It, that's not the problem. If, as long as it's a stacked AoE spender. Like, I, I wouldn't be too upset about only having one spender for AoE. As long as it would be a spender for stacked AoE. The problem with Munkin is that we only have one spender for AoE and it's a spread AoE spender. And that creates a situation where it just becomes incredibly imbalanced because a spread AoE spender means that it has to be balanced around spread AoE. And not around stack daily, right? Yeah, exactly. What Magro said, yeah. So that's 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 the only issue why I'm asking for a second spender. Unless they keep the unless they actually change Starfall the way they said they would. Because in the blue post they said they're gonna make Starfall targetable. And I think a lot of people complain about it because a lot of people don't understand. Like, I'm not necessarily sure why people complain so much about Starfall being targets, like a target thing again. I personally would actually prefer it to be targeted. Personally. Because, um, just because it's targeted doesn't mean that it's bad. Yes, it, it's different because you have to put your mouse there to, to put it there, but I personally don't mind it at all. Also, some people forgot how big Starfall actually was. Like, back then, um, like, in, in Legion, we had targeted Starfall, and it's actually still a really big circle, yeah? It's not as big as the current Starfall is, but it was it's much bigger than, like, Rain of Fire, or Blizzard, or whatever, right? Maybe I can find a video so you can see how big Starfall was. I guess you, you won't see it because it's... Uh, let me see, maybe I can find one. Hmm... Yeah, maybe it's like a DPS guide or something. You can see how big it, the server was. Oh yeah, I s uh, found one. This is Legion Munkin. You see the starfall? It's here. Like, look how big this starfall is. It's targeted. So, it's, it's like a targeted thing that he put down. 
But yeah, it's still really big, so it's not, it, you don't have to be that precise when you put it down, you know? So, I don't know, I personally don't think it's that bad to have a targeted starfall. In fact, I think it's better to have a targeted starfall, because then it's much easier to balance. I know that there would be different ways to balance it as well, but I personally uh, would prefer it this way, honestly. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people just forgot how big that targeted Starfall was before. And that's why everyone keeps comparing it to Reign of Fire. Like, all of the Moonkins that looked at the blue post, they're like, Oh, I don't want to be a Destro Warlock, I don't want to, like, blah blah blah. But it's not like Reign of Fire. I mean, look how huge this is, yeah? <laughs> like, this is still a pretty, pretty big Starfall. It's obviously not as huge as it is right now, but it's still pretty big. Like, much bigger than any other AoE that other classes have, right? So yeah, I don't think it would be bad. Also, you're not going to spam it. I mean, yeah, you might be spamming Starfall, but not as much as uh, people spam Rhine of Fire right now, right? Part of this is the tanks cut it out the circle. Yeah, some people were complaining that tanks cut it out the circle. Like, I get that. But look, again, look how big Starfall is. If it's a targeted spell. For tanks to cut it out of the circle, they would have to cut it really, really far. Like, I doubt that the tanks are going to cut it out of this huge circle. Right? Then they would literally have to sprint away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, in Legion, kiting was actually meta. You would constantly kite everything as a tank. And you never really had a big issue with, with Starfall. Because you would just put Starfall in the way where the mobs were running and... The, the circle is so big that the Starfall would already run out when the mobs were running out. So you never really had a big issue with Starfall being targeted or tanks moving the mobs out. Thanks for 11 months, Morte. What's up? Yeah, I will be able to give beta keys away on Monday and Tuesday, guys. Monday and Tuesday, we give away beta keys. So yeah, um, I personally don't mind if it's targeted. If it's not targeted, like if it stays the way it is right now, then I, I honestly think they should put a CD on it again and give us another spender or something. I don't know. Because uh, I'm just concerned about tuning at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Since we won't be able to um, test stuff, should I level a character to 70? Hmm. Is there a point to level a character to 70? I wonder. Because if they do raid testing and plus on this other server anyway, where there's template characters, then I'm not sure if there's really a point to level to 70. Yeah? Right, because they said that on this server they're going to do testing, like raid testing and a plus testing and stuff. So I'm... I remember in the past, <laughs> dude, beta testing was actually so cursed in the past. They used to do rate tests on beta, but you were only able to join the beta test if you leveled a character to level 70, uh, to, to max level. Like, no joke, that's, that's, that's how they did rate testing in the past. Yeah, you literally had to level a character all the way to max level to participate in rate testing. There were no pre-made characters. It was so cursed. 
It was messed up. <laughs> Good morning, Vicatero. What's up? But they don't do that anymore, usually. Usually you can just have a template or whatever. I mean, the only reason why I would want to level is I want to see max level stuff. And I'm not sure if you can really see that much max level stuff anyway. Yeah, you can do heroics, but I don't really care about heroics. Because what's the point of doing heroics, you know? Like, there's nothing you learn in heroics. <laughs> but I would, I would like to level to see what you have to do when you're max level, you know? Like, what is it you're doing when you're max level? Is there any weeklies that you're doing? Any, like, renown farm? Any, like, you know what I mean? That's something I would like to check out. My feedback about the questing experience is completely useless because I never like questing, no matter how good it is. Like, I, ju I just don't like questing. Period. It could be, like, the best questing experience in the world and I would still not like it. So I don't think I can give good feedback when it comes to questing. <laughs> yeah, what do we do? I guess we're gonna play... Well, let's play a little bit. Let's do it. Yeah, leveling in Final Fantasy XIV is actually the biggest pain. Oof. <laughs> and how long it always took to to skip the the cutscenes? Like in World of Warcraft, there's, there's a cutscene, you just like instantly escape, and okay, and you are out of it. And in in Final Fantasy XIV, it takes like at least like thirty seconds to stop a cutscene. Because it's like you stop it and then you have to press OK and then the whole screen gets black and then you come back and it's like half an hour later. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> okay, so a lot of these items aren't working. Is Weaker Us working? Maybe we just play with Weaker Us. I don't know if Weaker Us is working now. Is details not working either? Fuck. I'm supposed to play this game without details. Oh, we cars aren't working as well. Oh. I hate playing video games without add ons. Okay, wait, bear back one second. And then, we're gonna do some dungeons, I think. So give me a second. So my mute button works, but everything else doesn't work. That's so weird. Hmm.
All right. Oh no. The good old blacklisted spam. All right, let's do it. I need some key vines and some action bars. Um. How does that work again? Oh, there. No, I have to enable that action bars here, no? Where? Yeah. I know you can do a level 70 character. Should we play some solo shuffle? For fun? Maybe that's a better idea. I'm not sure if there's enough people queuing though. <laughs> oh, let's take a look. Ugh. Shit, but Mookie is so uh, scuffed. Okay, let me think. What would you even take in PvP? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, wait. So we need Mooka Farm. We need this. I want Frenzy. I want this. Uh, what else do we want from here? Do, do I want Skull Bash? Ah, fuck it, other people can interrupt. I'm not interrupting. I mean, it would be kind of nice. Wait, how- do you not get the stealth stun anymore? From Rake? Is that not a thing anymore, by default? Hey, Kena, what's up? Probably not, Kena, probably not. Uh, I guess we want Cyclone, we want this, we want Typhoon, we want that, we want this. Vortex. Kinda want Furor. I, I wonder if they are gonna fix Furor. I think I want this. Oh. Now I don't have Lakara's teachings. Hmm. Kinda want Lakara's teachings. Should we remove Skaldash? But this is also really good. And there's just so many things I want. Huh. We need f five points. That's a lot of points. I don't think we can go for our Andlikara's teachings if I still want... Typhoon? And Vortex. And Skull Bash, and this? Fuck. Can't get it. I mean, I don't know. I guess I don't necessarily need Sunfire Cleave. Good morning. Six percent. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty important, no? Maybe it's not that important. Maybe just skip the. the yeah, I don't know. It just seems a bit scuffed. I don't think I can reach all of this.
I can't just play without Sunfire. I need Sunfire. Look, I can't get rid of anything. I can get rid of this. I need Drake. I need three more points. What if we get rid of this? I need one more point. I mean, I don't have war board sex. That just sucks. Can I get rid of improved friends here? I mean, maybe like this. Can I get vortex somehow? Maybe we get rid of improved bark skin. I guess. Let's try this. Okay, then. What do we want here? Want Alpine Frenzy? We don't even need Starfall. I don't think I need Starfall. In Solo Shuffle, right? I, mean, I don't Starfall. Hey, Arby, what's up? Hey, Teresa. Yeah, three point knots. <laughs> it's just a gr it's just great. So we need Solar Beam. How would we play PvP with Dreambinder? But if I, I have to take Stellar Drift and Starfall if I want Dreambinder. That's messed up. I don't want that. I mean, we could we could technically play a dot build. It's probably pretty good in arena as well. It's kind of like old Affliction Warlock, like where you just dot everything up and then you just spam Starfall or something. There's like Circle of Life and Death and stuff. Maybe that works? Probably kind of bad, though. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, dude. <laughs> Man, this talent tree is just so horrible. <laughs> um. I don't necessarily want improved eclipse if I'm gonna be playing a dot build, then I'm just dotting, right? I guess. Don't really need improved. Solar beam. I mean, it's probably nice, but. I guess we want Orb Breaker. Six points. Oh, wait, I want Twin Moons, right? I mean, I guess I don't necessarily want Twin Moons. Oh, shit, I want Stellar Flare, I think. Ooh, I think I want Stellar Flare. Then I have to go Umbral Intensity. How many po Oh, I only have one point left. I need two. I kind of want to go Onets, no? Or Dreambinder? Fuck, I don't know. I just don't know. Pretty sure I want Orbit Breaker. Hmm. I 
I think I go with Blessing of Anshi if I want to play PvP, right? Actually, no, I want to play Blessing of a Loon because it's easier to enter Lunar Eclipse than it is to enter Solar Eclipse. Because casting two Wraths is much easier than casting two Starfires. I guess we get rid of Stellar Inspiration. And then we go with this as well? Or do we need Fear of Disguise? Fuck. I mean, this is just gonna be so bad. I wish I wouldn't have to put like five points into all of these <laughs> abilities here. Oh my god, this is going to be a disaster. Whatever. We're doing it. <laughs> I'm not sure if Dream Butter is actually... Hmm. I don't think you have enough astral power to really make use of this, honestly. I mean, it did buff shooting stars. And have Orbit Breaker, so maybe. But then what would I do? Do I use it on Starfall? Do I just spam Starfall? I think so. Okay, hey, whatever. Let's try. See what happens. Okay, right, uh... First of all, we need to not keyboard turn. Then didn't I just enable the bars? Okay. Wait. I'm just gonna create some weaker us. So where's the target frame? Oh, there. And where's the grit? Why is this grit so big? What's going on with this here? Want this, want this. I don't need Starfall. I don't need Stellar Drift. I need this. Wait, look at how little uh, abilities I actually have. I only have one, two, three, four, five active abilities. Huh. Bark skin. Incapora. Oh my god, there's literally nothing I need to track. Skull bash. Oh, this as well, and this. Wild charge.
Okay, we're good. Then. Oh, wait, we need to send. Oh no. Oh, it's already here. Cool. Any roots? Cap. Taunt. No, we don't need this. Actually, we do need this. this. We're clicking that. Skull bash. Where do I bind skull bash? This, I guess. Or? Yeah. This whole bar is gonna change, fuck. Okay, it's fine though. I'll charge. Oh no, I already have that here. Okay, wait, let's bind this and then see what happens. Um, where's the binding mode? The bind mode. Wait, do I have this twice? Okay, whatever. G, shift Q. Shift uh huh. Oh wait, what did I have ink? What did I have this on? I forgot. Shift G? I forgot. And this? This? Skull Bash. I'm not gonna bind this. This is one. No, Star Force one. Fuck, I keep forgetting. All of my spells. <laughs> This is shift five? Oh, it's five. Then this is uh, this, that, this. Control R. I think. Shift here. Hey, Inkeeper, I forgot. Shift G. Shift one, shift three. Two. Shift Q? No. I think this. Q. Then E? Right here. Four? E three four. I think so. Four. Oh, I don't have Sunfire. I'm sure I forgot something. Let's see. And this, and that. Oh. <laughs> this is a wrap. Oh, Starfall? I can put something else here. Vortex, where's Vortex? Oh, it's here. Mm. What else do I need to track? I need to put this further down as well. Why is this bar always moving so much? This resource bar. It's taking up so much space. 
Where's my cast bar? Where is my cast bar? Casper. I'm confused. Casper. I don't see it. Do you see it? Oh, it's right there. Why is it so tiny? Also, why doesn't this show it when I'm enabling it? Where did it go? It moved down again. Eh, uh, hello? Keeps resetting. Why? <laughs> Did it stay? No, it doesn't. Oh my god. Oh no, it works. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I guess you can't move it? Then we just lock it to the player frame, I guess. It's here now. Can you buy gear somewhere? Oh, travel form. I don't have travel form bound. Okay. So can you disable these ugly borders somehow? Oh, so I wanted to check if you can buy gear. Or do you, do you get scale? What if you, if you queue solo shuffle, like what happens? Does your gear scale or something? Or is there any like... Oh wait, I also need PvP talents. I haven't even looked at all these talents. Never reduce magic damage taken from spells, and you may now cast with our wild bear. Such a grand surface spell crit chance. Sunfire moon fire when there are spells. Deep roots. Do they not have any new spells?
Well, I'm definitely playing Starburst if I'm gonna spam Starfall. Oh, I forgot to ban the Stellar Flare. Let's just take some passive, so I don't have to think about it. Which one? This one. Okay, where's Stellar Flare? Why does it say I always show? Oh, it already is on. Thanks for 18 months, Light Boy. What's up? What's up? Alright, let's do this. Let's see how bad it's gonna be. Where's the Q? Oh, here at the bottom. Average wait time 12 minutes, okay. <laughs> Was the pulsar broken on beta? I don't know, let's see. Um, is it? It could be. Yeah, Muna? That is correct. Oh, it is broken. Well, fuck. I mean, I need a different talent, but which one? Sister G, I guess, is the only other option. not work as well. Wait, 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 wait. So how do I, how do I abuse Fuhrer? Stellar Drift? Oh, I forgot! Oh, we can't have Stellar Drift, so we can't have Dimeborn Dreambinder either. Oh, that's so annoying. Oh my god. What did we do then? Oh my god, this is just so stupid. is so bad. I mean, all of this is just bad. Yeah. 
guess I go... Does this even work? I don't know if any of these talents work, honestly. working? I don't think it is. Because uh, I'm not getting the buff. So I guess balance of all things doesn't work either, right? Does circle of life and death even work? circle works either. Hmm. Well, what do we do then? I guess I'm just gonna go with the talents that work. So this doesn't work. Circle doesn't work. Umbral intensity infusion should probably work. Or? I mean, I guess. Orbit Breaker works. So we just go with this. I could get rid of Free of the Skies and put another one here. I'm not sure if it's worth it. Probably. And then go with Fury or something, or New Moon? Now the Fury of the Sky is pretty good. 4% damage increase? I'll just keep it like this for now. Starlord is so bad. Yeah, I, I hate the way. I, if I'm forced to take Starlord, I'm just gonna be so upset. Having improved moon fire as on fire. It's also just so scuffed. planning on playing like a dot build, but I'm not sure if I can play it without half the talents working. I wanted to just spend Starfall, you know? I it's probably a bad idea, but... <laughs> I don't know. It's probably bad. Yeah, the idea of spamming Starfall in Arena only... Like, it's good, but I think you need the certain talents for it. Like, I think you need Circle of Life and Death, and, like, Pulsar, and... And Time Warden Dreambinder and stuff, because without that, it's probably just really shitty. So I don't have all of my things that buff my dots. Yeah, maybe I should give up on the Starfall spam. 
Not sure though. I'd, I at least want to try it once. Just to see how it feels like. <laughs> also, uh, let's try Furor again. I love it. I can't even spend all my Astro Power with that furor thing. Thank you so much. 25, 29 months. Appreciate that. Welcome back. <laughs> no, wait! Wait, I'm in a solo shuffle queue, yeah? Oh my god, I thought I got yeeted from the group now. Thank god. Okay, you wanna do damage comparison on these two on these four targets, Brian? Do a do a pull timer. Wait, first I need to we'll just wait until these dots are gone. Dude, how long are these dots up for? 44 seconds! <laughs> Okay, let's just go. These dots will never expire. <laughs> let's just go. <laughs> yeah, extended by Starfall, yes. <laughs> okay, pull timer. <laughs> I will give you a mic of the wild demon, Brian. Oh, I'm late. Okay, pull 10. Shit, I can't do that. Why not? Okay, let's just go. Three, two, one. I need to ramp a little bit. Watch me.
Okay, how much damage are we doing? I don't have damage meters. I'm actually wasting so much astro power, I just have too much. Check this screen, okay, I'm checking. <laughs> okay, apparently. Apparently this is after Brian's second combust. <laughs> well, to be fair, to be fair, I am totally abusing a broken talent. I am 100% abusing a broken talent. <laughs> so... <laughs> In case you don't know what I'm talking about, this talent here is completely broken. Also, like, I think it's actually bucked and it's broken. Because the way it works... So, if I shift into caster form now, I get the furor buff. And if I shift into moonkin form right after, I get the furor buff again. Even though I haven't been out of moonkin form for 15 seconds. So that's just a buck, I think. He's like, look, look at my buff bar. So I go caster for him, I have furor. And now I go moonkin for him and I have furor again. It makes no sense, because I haven't been out of moonkin for him for 15 seconds, right? I don't know why it's doing that at all. And it shouldn't allow you to... Like, it's just really bucked with moonkin, the furor talent. It's just completely messed up. Uh, CA gives you both eclipses. So 15% extra damage on astral spells and 10% haste. Yeah, I'm gonna play without the broken talent, okay? We, we can do it. Let's try again. I'm just not gonna activate the furor. I'm just gonna do it without. I'm playing some weird talents, but it's fine, I think. We can try. Let's wait for the dots to disappear. They're still up for, like, a while. <laughs> Good evening, Straken, what's up? <laughs> okay. Ready, Brian? Ready? Three, two, one, go. Man, applying my dots just takes so long without the Sunfire talent, it's insane. Oh, I forgot about Sissy G. Wasted two stellar flares. 
are low. <laughs> okay, how did it look this time, Brian? How how's the damage looking? I didn't do the sister G. Oh. <laughs> oh, I guess. <laughs> I guess we still beat Brian without the <laughs> without the furor abuse. <laughs> yeah, let me try to download the thing actually. Uh Downloads. Well, to be fair, a lot of it is just tuning, right? Also, Moonkin is still, like, Moonkin just doesn't work. Moonkin doesn't have reworked talents yet. So, none, none of it matters. Because <laughs> whatever Moonkin is doing right now, they're not going to be doing once they rework the talents. Okay, wait, uh, cut. Beta interface, add-ons. Do you have to relock? Wait, fuck, I think I have to relock. Maybe I didn't download the correct thing. This, uh? Let's try this again. Um, I don't think there are vendors on this server but i'm not sure actually i haven't seen the vendors at least
aggressive. Where is it? Seems a bit bucked. What's wrong with it? How do I fix these details? Brian, help. Yeah, why is mine fucked? Hmm. Okay, someone works now. Okay, let's try this again. Oh! It's happening! <laughs> let's do some PvP! <laughs> I hope they don't focus me, I just want to starve all them. Come on, accept! I'm totally using the broken talent, of course. What do you mean? You think I'm gonna play PvP ethically? Oh, it looks up. Yikes. Okay, well then we're gonna do a round of DPS. Find some guts. Ooh, we got lust. Find some more dots. Okay, I'm gonna do some four action. One, two, three. Then we're gonna do some sister gear. Man, this target, these, I need larger nameplates. These nameplates are way too tiny. How are you supposed to target them? <laughs> Ooh, I got PI, let's go. Oh my god, there's just so many star falls. It doesn't stop, it doesn't stop, guys. More star falls. Yeah, I need to increase the name phase class. Options. Yeah. What? My action bars are all gone. What is happened? <laughs> my action bars. Help, help. Oh my goodness. I was supposed to play the game like this. You are gathered here for my entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Stellar to Flare. prove yourself. Starfall. Cooldowns. <sighs> Where's Moonkin Form? Moonkin Form. I need Moonkin Form. Oh, I have Moonkin Form. Ah!
It's time for the show. Don't disappoint. If Star Search me. not on. Fuck. Oh, yeah. Listen, mister. Oh shit, I don't have the style I'm clicking. Interesting. What happened? I did not expect we won already? this outcome. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Gee, this is the wrong button. Fuck. Why is this so messed up? Okay, this. Control E is stampede. This is so messed up. Rock charge? Keeps going and I have no spells. <laughs> no! Now this bar also changed. Oh my god, this is just so cursed. Holy Jesus, it's cursed. I don't have any of my spenders found. What do I need? G? I need Wrath. Starfire is bound. Sunfire. Moonfire. Silver Flare. Okay, this is all I need. Fuck, whatever. This for this. Oh, I'm in the wrong side. Yeah, I don't know why my bars just keep changing. It's super messed. Super messed up. Why can I not cast this at you? I'm just gonna... Okay, we keep winning. I don't know, guys. It's all me, apparently. <laughs> I don't know what's happening, but we keep winning. <laughs> I have half my abilities not bound, but it's fine, I guess. <laughs> uh, <sighs> okay, we keep finding more and more abilities. We need this. We have this. Yeah, this warlock is doing a lot of damage though. Wait, why did we so lose? Now. What happened? Did anyone die? Dude, I honestly don't know what this, what's even going on. <laughs> I never, I never know what's happening, dude. 
So we need to ban this as well? Shift 4, what's shift 4? Oh, it's worth a loon. Yeah, that would be nice if you have this band as well. Typhoon would be nice as well. More attacks. What's 5 again? Don't die, don't die. Interesting. Yes. I did not expect <laughs> this outcome. Okay, how many more? Uh, just Soul Shuffle is interesting. How many rounds you play? How is that? How is it going? Okay, S slowly but surely we're binding all of our spells to you. I'm still missing uh, a bunch of stuff though. Cat form? Terraform? Cyclone? Incavor? Vortex? Hey, <laughs> Free Salmon, what's up? This guy not taking any damage. I guess it's a warlock. This creates line of sight. It's so dumb. Are we dying? Oh. Did we win or lose now? For now. Did I win? I run of five rounds. Let's go. Huge. And of course, I also did the most damage. Or... Of course. <laughs> okay, we want to do this again. Okay, I don't know why my buttons don't work inside Arena, though. That's so messed up. Okay, we have to queue up again. This furor is really nice. Oh, wait, I have to leave group. So otherwise, I can't queue up. Yeah, also, why were my nameplates so tiny? I wish they were bigger. Because I enabled large nameplates, but they were still just so tiny. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's not how it works though. Like I entered the arena and all of my bars were changed, like empty. It's uh, some buck, I guess. I hope it's not gonna be empty again when I enter the arena again. Oh, you're saying if I turn on war mode, it should work, maybe? I mean, no, my bars are still the same. There's definitely just some bug, I think. I don't know what's, um... How to fix it, though. Face, not Melkazar alone, but the legions I command. Hey, May, what's up? How you doing? Yeah, I mean, I guess we try Plater then. Plate default Plater just sucks too, though. Uh, I don't think so, Smina. I think I already had my bars done when I signed up for beta, uh, for Soul Shuffle. Pretty sure. I mean, I can try reloading UI once I'm inside the arena. Maybe that works. Oh wait, default plate is not even that bad. Holy shit, those are huge bars though. <laughs> I like it though. Let's let's keep them. Maybe the target bar shouldn't be that big though. Oh, I have a plate that has a cast bar in the middle of my screen. I actually want that. Because the default cast bar is pretty bad because I can't move it. Does this work? Ah, oh, shit. Ooh, I would love my profile. Well, I tried moving the default cast bar and it wouldn't let me. I always moved back earlier. Oh, it works now. Okay, we're good, we're good. Wait, what is this? Ah. Oh no, Plater is uh, doing things. Thanks for 55 months, Dashi. What's up, what's up? Oh, my bars are working. Nice. Aren't? Right. Yeah, they are. Cool, oh my god. Oh wait, plates are still messed up. Shit. Why is this resource thing so big? Also, why is this so tiny? You are gathered here for my entertainment. Ah, oh, whatever, I'm not gonna move this. I later. Actually, I can move it now. To prove yourself.
Should wear the things again, though. <laughs> this resource bar is so huge. It's time for the show. Well, that's a lot of melee Don't players. Holy shit, those name plates are huge. Wait, I didn't die, right? For now. Who died? It was me, right? I died? Excuse me? Dude, uh, how do you figure out what ha Oh, I did die! Oh my god, are you kidding me? I died in 2.1 seconds? What the fuck? Dude, that's insane! Please don't kill me, please don't kill me, please don't kill me. Help me! Ha! Team! Thank you. Interesting. Nice. Got him. I did not expect this outcome. <sighs> yeah, that death earlier was so messed up. What was Rising Sun Kick? Rising Sun Kick 36k, Rising Sun Kick 35k. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> That's so messed up. Now. <laughs> okay, this show was a bit lower, but I just died from from seventy percent to zero in one second. It's the rising sun kick. Thirty one k, thirty k, seventeen k. What the fuck is that damage? That's so messed up. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, that monk keeps uh, going on me and I don't like it. What are you doing? Waiting on my star balls? I have no idea what's going on. Without my- I actually just don't see anything. With these weird ass nameplates being- covering half my screen. <laughs> That's the name of friendly nameplates as well. <laughs> I also don't have a keybind for this, which is a bit unfortunate. It's this guy that keeps killing me, right? Ah, 
I'm just... Yeah, I don't know what this is, but this needs to stop. <laughs> I just died in a... Uh, I just died within a two second, like, stun. From 100% zero, with Barkskin up. <laughs> this is honestly so dumb. Rising Sun Cake, 30k. Rising Sun Cake, 30k. Rising Sun Cake, 16k. Like, what is that? That's so stupid. <laughs> oh, man. And then again. Oh, my God. Oh, my Jesus. Why is this stun so fucking long as well? Interesting. <laughs> I did not expect this outcome. Oh, I'm actually so surprised that this Windwalker won. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, this one Windwalker was just one-shotting people left and right. <laughs> oh, that's so messed up. Okay, let's try this again, but this time hopefully we don't have a broken Windwalker and then I meet a team. <laughs> Oh, now my nameplates are not that bad anymore. Disable this resource bar, it's honestly it's still in here. Wait, can I get my own bars? And my own plater settings. Where are they again? The resource bar. Wait, is that actually personal bar, or is that my personal cast bar? I need to disable this. Oh. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I agree. I don't mind playing Stellar Flare if it's like a multi-dotting thing. And it actually gives me astral power and stuff. I think it's fine. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure star surging is better than star falling, but I just want to test the star fall build kind of thing. Where I'm just dotting and extending my... But I think the ramp up time is too long for PvP. Because yeah. I have to apply my dots. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably better to just star surge. But then I would also have to change my talents a bit. I probably want to go with this.
I don't think about this either. Yeah, something like this, I guess. Actually, I don't think we want this because we can just... If we just furrow or spam... Then... I mean, there's nothing we really need. Half the talents don't even work. I guess there's no other talents that would even be good for me. <laughs> This Umbral Infusion is not even that good, but I don't know what else to take anyway. <laughs> the damage meters are working. Um, what did I want to do? Take this one with haste. Haste and mastery. Haste crit, mastery crit. Oh, everyone has zero versatility as well. No wonder we just get one shot left and right. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to give up on the on the Starfall dream. I don't think it's working out. I think we have to do Star Surge instead, unfortunately. Um. How does this work again? Settings for the rate frames. In edit mode. Where do we put this? Let's put this up. Come. Cool. I guess I could also move... Nah. This is fine. I'm not sure if it worked now, but we'll see him. It feels so weird to have so little haste to serve an expansion though. Like, uh, even just applying my dots takes forever, it seems like.
It's just a global G series. It's like an hour. Yeah, we'll see if Stars is just enough damage to kill some people. I mean, should... I wonder if I should still cast uh, Star Search in caster form or if I should stick to Starfall there. Probably Starfall better. I could go caster form and Starfall caster form and then go back into Moonkin form and then Star Search in Moonkin form. Maybe that's best. Because the Star Search outside of Moonkin form doesn't do that much damage, right? But Starfall stays up when I enter Moonkin form again, so it's buffed afterwards. Also, you know how I said there's gonna be a Moonkin rework this week? Yeah, I don't think it's happening anymore. It's next week, for sure. Surely we're gonna get Moonkin Talons next week, right? <laughs> oh man. It has to happen, right? Eventually? to the gang. Thanks for Prime Sub, Vistraka. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. Wait, I also should make a macro for my... Actually, no, it doesn't matter. Um... I guess I'm gonna make a macro. How do we do this? Uh... I'm not sure if this works. Yeah, I hope so as well, Brewer. I hope so. Hey, hey, so what's up? No, Moonkins definitely will get talents reworked. Because they're talent. Like, Moonkins will 100% get a rework. I just wanna. Like, I just want it to happen soon before it's too late. And then it's all messed up. Because we got a base uh, spell changed, like a base... They changed our base abilities, basically. Yeah? But they didn't change our talents yet. To match our baseline changes. A lot of our talents just don't make sense with the new... They want to play flex queue at 7pm? Sounds like an interesting plan. I 
Okay, 7 p.m. flex queue. <laughs> Let's go. I guess I could go Incarn because it also procs for... Our, I think? Let's try. Okay, so we would Starfall, Starfall, Moonbeam Farm, Starfall, Star Search, Star Search, and then Incarn. Hello? I pressed Incarn. Hello? Is my macro isn't working? It should work though. Eh? Wait, so it doesn't proc for her. Wait, I didn't actually enter Incarn. Oh? I'm in CA. Happening. Is incarnation just bugged or what? Yeah, but it doesn't even work without the macro. Oh, I guess we're not playing incarn then. I'm glad all of this stuff is working. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. We believe in a change. This is happening. I mean, they actually said there will be changes. Yeah, we're not making this up. They literally said there will be talent rework. I'm not just uh, inhaling copium, they literally said they, they will update it. <laughs> so... <laughs> but just because they said they will, doesn't mean they will. I've been in queue for 17 minutes, hello? Any solo shuffle players? Brian, queue up for solo shuffle. We, n we need more people. Actually, we probably need healers. We need healers to queue up. even good for the scroll thing it's just a damage meter I thought it shows what spells you're casting but it doesn't it just shows every damage event that's messed up what are you gonna do with that circle 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 <laughs> great <laughs> can you change this somehow to show abilities cast like a streamer plugin, right? Wait, what? Oh, yeah. Where is it again? Action tracker. Oh, I see it. Oh. 
I go. No, it's not. Okay, this is it. I'm gonna own you so hard. <laughs> I'm already going, Brian. You have to join in. Should I have the wrong talents though? I have second target talents, it doesn't work. Okay, I'm resetting, but then I have to change talents, wait. What are we doing, single target or AoE? Okay, wait, I have to change a little bit. I need to, I need this. I need two more points. Did I get them from? Oh, from this. Oh wait, I'm missing this as well. Okay. I'm good to go. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I need to position myself. Okay, pull timer? Pull in three. Two, one. Watch it, I'm still ramping, yeah? I'm ramping, I'm ramping. Ramping. Okay, I almost got him, I almost got him. We got him guys, we got him. Our ramping time is a bit high. Unfortunately. Flare would also be longer if you starfall. <laughs> that would be kind of a key actually. Okay, we've been in combat for two minutes. Let's do three minutes so I can get another set of cooldowns. My dots are up for three minutes. <laughs> Look, I have a three minute sunfire and moonfire. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, 
Okay, I have to land soon. It's happening in just a second. That's it. This is as much damage as I can do. Four minute dots. Perfect. How much longer do you think I have to spam Starfall to make it uh, a one year dot? One year Moonfire? We have five minutes now, guys. Still going strong. Let's take a look. Oh my god, there's too many monks again. Oh no, wait, there aren't monks. Why is their color blue then? Or like this monk color. <laughs> I was like, it's two monks. <laughs> Alright, it's... Or is it? I don't have a group frame. My group frame doesn't work. Okay, it's two evokers, I see it. Two evokers, and then we have Destro, Elemental... Holy Paladin. Yeah, I don't have a group frame. Why Let's is that? Let's the best team win. Oh, who am I kidding? Give me a good shot. Oh, wait, I need to change my talents. I wanted to play the Skuldron thing. Oh my god, you have to cast this in Arena too? That's so dumb. It's time for the show. Don't disappoint me. Don't disappoint me. Wait, my door doesn't work. What the hell? I'm stunned. I'm stunned again. I am horrified. Oh my god. No, he gripped me into the... Oh. I'm just that, I guess. Oh, so close. This just means more entertainment. Help! I see who the strongest mortals are. Uh. For now. Chaos Barrage? What the hell is that? Unstable tier. Okay. Good old Chaos Barrage. Who doesn't know it? Why 
miss my fur and I'm frocking. Fuck, I'm just a seed the whole time. <laughs> Something did like a lot of damage, what was it? Oh, Eternity Surge. 53k. Alright, I guess. <laughs> I guess that's how much damage it does. <laughs> yeah, my form didn't proc, I don't know why. It didn't proc in caster form. For some weird reason. Got him. Expect this outcome. Yeah, I like this new arena. It's, I mean, it's somewhat cool, but it has a lot of like line of sight and stuff. So I'm not sure if it's gonna be like I don't know how the PvP players are gonna like this. I don't know. I think we have to focus this evoker guy. Cause I don't know I don't know if this Dester is gonna be dying. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I thought I'm dead. Interesting. Oh, I, I think I apologize from that. Outcome. Yeah, that uh, chaos barrage. Or the chaos bolt. Oh, what's that? Yeah, how does this chaos barrage thing work? I'm still able to tear. How does it work? Hmm. I don't know, I don't know. Is it not full moon in PvP? Uh, you can, you can full moon in PvP. Convoke just doesn't proc it.
God help! So close. This just means more entertainment. Interesting. I did not expect this outcome. I think we might have lost, guys. Wait, why is my thing not opening? I think I've, I've lost like every round so far. Well, actually, we won one round. <laughs> Man, I just wish I could cast some spells once in a while. That'd be nice. Question mark? <laughs> I am very confused. Also, I don't know why my party frames aren't working in uh, Arena. Because they work here. But they don't work inside Arena for some reason. What do I have to do? I mean, I didn't take anything here, but that's just auto activation, right? I don't need to have this enabled, right? Arena frames, then. It says party frames and raid frames. Oh, arena frames. No, but these are the enemy frames, not the group frame. I, I mean, my own group. I didn't see my own group inside the arena. I don't know. Maybe I just have to reload. Maybe it works. Uh, be right back one second.
Okay. We're doing the solo shuffle thing again. It's kind of fun. But Brian, I have to leave again. Sorry. Okay. Also, I need to use Forer better, because I need to be in an Eclipse to proc it. I need to enter Eclipse first, and then proc my Forer. But then I waste my first Furor in Moonkin form. Hmm, how am I gonna do that? I guess I just... Maybe if I just start in Moonkin form? Instead of going cat form? Who needs to stealth? I think that's the idea. And then we go out of Moonkin form. And back in. I guess it would be best to start in Moonkin form. Then proc Eclipse. And then CA. Like Starfall, Starfall, Starfall. Then this. I think that's the best. Then I have like a million star surges. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Fun now I'm in a stupid Twitch chatter. <laughs> Don't worry. Everyone is a stupid Twitch chatter. And uh, not that a lot of add-ons are working. You have to like download them. Um, like some add-ons have alpha uh, alpha versions for Dragonflight and some just don't. Or beta versions, I guess. Um, the druid talent trees are gonna be reworked, or the Moonkin ones at least. So we don't know what to think about the druid talents yet, because we don't have them yet. Well, we do have them, but they're really bad, and they're gonna rework them. Make sure you use the affiliate link. Oh my god, I can't close this! Okay, let's do it, Brian. Three targets or four targets? We need to wait a minute for my cooldown. Four. Okay, let's go four targets then. Wait, then I need to change this as well. Give me a sec. Shit. What did I usually do here? Oh, I need two points here. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. We can actually... Yeah, we can go, we can go. Giving you Mark of the Wild, because I'm nice. Okay, you do the timer. You do the pull timer. I always do it. It's your turn now. Questions, do I apply dots first? I think I do. Before we enter Eclipse. Okay. 
And before we scroll down something. That's a long full timer. <laughs> Brian, please! My solo shuffle invites! Okay, going. Did we get less? My Starlord still bucks sometimes, like it just stops stacking at two for some reason. I don't know why it does that. What's going on, Brian? Are you using a broken talent? Maybe? <laughs> I would have won! <laughs> I don't know if you would have won without the broken talent. I don't know. Hmm. In eight minutes, we go again. <laughs> Okay, fine, Brian. <laughs> fine. this either. He dropped it. <laughs> Look at my 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 breakdown. Starfall, Starfire, Starfire, Starfall, Starfall, Starfire, Starfire, Starfall, Moonbeam for him. Starfall, Starfall, Starfall. Star <laughs> Ah, oh, this talent is just amazing, isn't it? <sighs> it's kind of crazy how long this talent has been bugged already, yeah? Or broken. I, I wonder if they're gonna fix it eventually. Or are they just gonna leave it as broken as it is right now? Who knows? Find out soon.
Okay, I'm ready for solo shuffle. Invite. They should do with this talent, by the way, to fix it. First of all, they should fix it so it actually works. Because right now, it doesn't work. Like, I don't know what is causing the bug, but I said this early, early, earlier already. But if I. Like, I'm in Munkin form right now, right? So I leave Munkin form, and I get Furor. And I go into Munkin form again. And I get Furor again, which obviously is a bug. Because I haven't, I have been in Munkin form in the past 15 seconds. So, obviously it doesn't work. And then it also shouldn't work on Starfall. Or it shouldn't work on any, yeah, it should just not work on Starfall. I guess it also shouldn't work on Star Search. It shouldn't work on Munkin abilities in Caster form, I think. Caster form should only be heals, I think. Heals cost no mana. It shouldn't be moving spells working. Because then, if that's how it works, then it's fine. And I guess for non moonkin players, it could make Star Search not have a cooldown anymore. Because if you have Star Search as a Feral, Guardian, or Rester Druid, then your Star Search has a cooldown in the cast time. And Furor could just make Star Search basically have no cooldown. Or have no cooldown and be an instant cast. So that might work. There's an inner cooldown. But why would there be an inner cooldown? That just makes no sense. Yeah, like, I just don't understand why there would be an indoor cooldown. Like, it clearly says, if I haven't been in a form for 15 seconds, then I get Furor. So why would it reset? It, that's just, it's just really dumb. They should just remove the inner cooldown. Because otherwise you can always double proc it. No, they shouldn't reword it, they should just not make this work, because it's stupid. Because, like, even for Feral, that would be stupid, right? Because then Feral, like, let's say you're in cat form, you leave cat form, and then you go cat form again, and none of your shit costs energy. Like, if that's how it works, then y everyone would just play Furor and constantly switch forms, which is really bad. Like, this is really bad gameplay wise, if everyone's forced to do this because it's so good. <laughs> it's just not worked this way. Yeah, I'm almost plat two, Brian. Close. I'm basically diamond already. Oh, I actually don't need to be diamond. I thought I had to be diamond. I need an invite into Soul Shuffle because I need to come back out and then duel Brian and AoE without using Furor. I 
plus up in 30? Yeah, but my soul shuffle. I'm gonna get an invite in just a second. No, this is an add-on. The nameplate, the nameplate things. It's Plater. No, we're not going, Brian. I don't have to. I don't even have the wrong talents. Yeah, that is something that I honestly don't understand why they're not doing that. I honestly do not understand why they're not giving us a test area. Because we actually used to have something somewhat similar. If you guys remember these challenges in Worlds of Jenner. Um, like the role challenges, you know, when you entered, you talk to NPCs, they reset your cooldowns, you get buffs. And then you were fighting like waves of mobs. You know what I mean? They could just use that and make it like a training area. I don't know why they're not doing that. Yeah, proving grounds, yeah. They could just have proving grounds for testing purposes on like beta and PTR. So people can actually test their stuff without having to wait forever for like Bloodlust City and stuff. It just makes no sense that they won't let you do that. They could even let you spawn, yeah, they could even let you spawn dummies in certain locations so you can test different scenarios. Like you can test two target cleaves, spread out, blah blah blah, you know. Maybe they're worried that people are gonna be min-maxing too hard, if that's actually a possibility. Because if we would have these kind of proving grounds on PTR and beta, then people would like super super min-max every single situation. And they would even be able to ride proper um, APLs as well for it, I guess. For SimCraft. And then, I don't know. You could recreate certain boss fights in like the Proving Grounds. And then it would be possibly a bit too min-maxy. But they don't need... Maybe instead of letting you spawn dummies, they could just give you like the same thing as they have here. Like, they could just create proving, proving grounds where... The only thing that I really care about is, like, resetting cooldowns, right? So even if the dummies are not gonna be movable or changeable, it's still better than anything else. <clears throat> yeah, I think practice... Like, a practice tool that League of Legends has probably wouldn't work in WoW. I mean, it would work, but it would be too min-maxy as a set. It would give people so many opportunities to actually like super min max everything, which probably is kind of bad. I don't know. But resetting cooldowns, I mean, that is something that wouldn't ruin anything. Yeah, yeah, that is true too, she guess. Oh my god, somebody queue up to solo shuffle, guys. We need healers or something. I've been in queue for 18 minutes. Ah, uh, shit, thank you so much for five stuff, Gifts Anonymous. Thank you so much. Welcome to Talim, Imori, Phryxus, Baluni, and Carrot. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. Hope you're doing well today, Anonymous. When are you getting Moonkin keys? Well, whenever Moonkin gets reworked in beta well, and a plus is available time, in beta, Moonkin. then we will play some Moonkin. Hello, new friend. Welcome, Hello, new friend. Oh, thank you so much for giving us up to lonely Litten as well. Thank you so so much. Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. Okay, maybe we just do it. Fuck it. I'm gonna respect. Shit. 
keep making I keep messing this up. Why can I not apply changes? Did it just work? I guess it did. Okay, let's go, Brian. Pull timer. As soon as we go, I'm gonna get Soul Shuffle invites, I'm telling you. Okay, go. Starlord only stuck up to two. I don't know why I'm even entering the Silver Eclipse, to be honest with you. DPS I won. <laughs> All right. Yeah, why is my Star Lord bugged? I don't understand why it bugs out so all the time. And, and it only gives me four percent haste when it's supposed to give me eight, two stacks. Talents are bugged or something. Oh, he's getting double bloodlust? <laughs> so you're allowed to use a bug and I'm not? I see how it is, Brian. I'm <laughs> We're changing this again. Why did won't he must spend all available? For, okay. Well, now it works. Okay, let's see if it works now. Still four percent. See if it's sexy. Three? No. Yes, it is. Yeah, they said that Starfall will be targetable, but I'm not sure if they just didn't implement it yet, you know? Like, it literally could just be that they didn't implement it. 
Or they changed their mind. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so I have 4% uh, haste. 10%? 12%? Yeah, I'm, I'm only getting two stacks. And it also gives me 2% per stack. Well, here it says Star Surgeon's Ever Again 3, 4% haste. Six up to three times. So it would be 12%. With three stacks, but I'm only getting four percent with two stacks. But this has been back since the start of beta or the start of alpha. I think they don't care about all of these bugs because they're gonna rework the talents anyway. I wouldn't even I wouldn't be upset if they remove Star Lord completely. <laughs> No, the way the Starfall change works is that it's a ground targeted circle. It will target everything that is in the circle. I'll show you. You see this circle here? That's how Starfall will work, or the set that will work like that. You see that big rectangle area targeted? There we go. Wait, we need to slow this down so we can actually see it. Oh my god, it's so fast! I don't have boomer reaction. Uh, I don't have sumer reactions. <laughs> no. <laughs> Seriously. Wait, how do you go a pixel back? Wasn't there a thing that allowed you to go like one pixel back? Or not one pixel, you know what I mean. Like one millisecond. What was the, the thing for that? There's like a button. This thing? Okay, that doesn't work for me at all. Okay, that enabled captions. <laughs> it's so. Uh, uh, what did I do now? That's not working at all anymore. <sighs> I broke YouTube. But anyway, you, you saw it, right? Oh my god, what did I do? Oh, he's probably just talking! That's why it didn't move. Because he's talking. Maybe. More bursty approach, but yeah. overall... Anyway, you get what I mean. <laughs> Hello, being in queue for 28 minutes. Shouldn't Pulsar proc account for the Celsius talent as entering Eclipse? Yes, but Pulsar doesn't work on PTR. Or what do you mean? Like, we can't actually test it because Pulsar doesn't work, yeah? Pulsar doesn't work. Onus doesn't work. Dream Better doesn't work. Circle of Life doesn't work. Balance of All Things doesn't work. I think Convoke also doesn't work. Uh, Adaptive Storm doesn't work. That's it, I think. And what works? 
The talents that I've selected work. Except Star Lord. That one does not work. <laughs> it's a tragedy. Single target? Oh, I think my single target damage is gonna be really bad. Okay, let's test single target. What would I go with single target? I don't think I play Orbit Breaker then. Actually, maybe I do. I mean, what else am I gonna play if nothing works? None of these abilities work anyway. Yeah, maybe I just play this. Fuck it. Yeah, let's go, Brian. Single target. Pull timer, go. I mean, my sets are also scuffed, yeah? I like way too much crit. Oh, we're going, okay. Wait, I just entered Soul Wipers. Uh, Lunar first, so I'm racing. My single target is honestly just scuffed. Unless I use Squirrel. And maybe it's scuffed even then. Yeah, with four we do a decent amount of damage, but obviously that's not how it's gonna work. I'm lying too much. <laughs> yeah. Playing fire mage with lag is probably bad. <laughs> hey Billy, what's up? Yeah, I don't know why I'm not getting bloodlust. Like whenever Brian bloodlust, I'm not getting it. I don't know why. It's weird. Yeah, I mean, they will change for, for, uh, for her, I think. I mean, I, I hope they will. Because obviously it's not good. <laughs> yeah, CA is also really bad. I mean, it doesn't really matter. There's no point to talk about all of this stuff, right? Because they're going to rework our talents. At some point. Maybe. Ooh, I just got some beta keys, guys. How many do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 beta keys. It's okay, I guess. <laughs> it's okay. Could have been better. <laughs> oh. I thought the point of the rework was to make CA less powerful, but but CA wasn't uh, really powerful before. Like Celestial Alignment is not really powerful on live servers right now. 
It's, it's, it's really not. People think it's really good because of uh, Ravenous Frenzy. But that's just because of the Covenant, right? Without, without Ravenous Frenzy, our claws aren't as strong. I will be giving them away. I think I'm gonna do one Twitter giveaway and then one streaming giveaway. It's gonna be Monday, Tuesday. Man, I have this new thing here and it smells so good. I have this, this, this thing here, it smells so good. It's supposed to smell like um, Morocco. I think it smells like, well, I don't know what Morocco would smell like, honestly. <laughs> but it smells very good. I'm a big fan. He's nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm basically on holiday at home <laughs> in my PC room. No one's queuing for solo shuffle. Oh man. 36 minute queue. <laughs> Is there any news we can watch in the meantime? Any nice uh, dragonfly video? Oh, you know what? I actually wanted to watch the one video about the item level change. Did Max talk about that? Let's see if Max is a video we want to watch. Problem with class balancing in Dragonflight. Hmm. I didn't know there's a problem. Mr. Raid, raid leader guy can, uh, I know there's only two spots left and my class doesn't really do anything, but perhaps a spot? Hey guys, uh, I had a great conversation with my stream today. Uh, started talking about, you know, potential class stacking and like really what goes into, you know, those kind of decisions that are made design wise, not really tuning wise. I ended up having you know, a lot of good insight, I think, onto, like, kind of... Mm, like, I'm gonna have some an overall cut, yes. ...about how class balance mm. works in a rating environment at, an, at a high level. But it also kind of shows some flaws that a few classes have and some good things that other classes have that haven't been talked about enough. Anyways, I thought the whole thing was great. It, the, the chat was great, too, with uh, really good feedback. So I hope you enjoy it. Do you know what I want to think? I can make a ladder. Think about with you guys, by the way. I think I showed you guys my raid value sheet. I haven't pulled it up in a while, and I also never finished it. I got bored with it, but... So this is currently how it is in Dragonflight. You need one of each of these classes. So there's 11 slots. When you add a full amount of healers and tanks, it's basically gone to, like, here. And then there's, like, six spots for DPS classes. If you guys had to pick any DPS class conventionally as you know them now or for what they do in Dragonflight, if there's any class in the game that even has the potential to be stacked to four... What do you think they are and why? What classes could be stacked to four? Now, you, a lot of you guys are going to remember times where classes were stacked to four or more. Let me think about this. I mean, and it's totally dependent on the actual fight, right? But if you don't look at the boss fight and don't care about utility, then what do you want to stack to four? Is um, the group buff classes? Rogue. Rogue is a group buff that uh, reduces your act like your offensive cooldowns, right? So you would want that. Not low rogue. Yeah. That's it. I don't think there's any other class that give you like a specific damage or a specific value that would be valuable in all bosses of course if you go into very specifics then you could say a warlocks because you need four gateways you know like stuff like that or oh you need four of this because you need that or whatever should 
Shadow Priest for a PI. Nah, that's that's a tuning thing. Because I mean Shadow Priest like you don't know like the only reason why you would want to invite multiple Shadow Priests is if the value of PI and their own damage is better than another class without PI, which is 100% a tuning thing, right? Because it could literally just be worse, technically. More. But when that happened in BFA, there was scrolls. So if you didn't bring a raid buff, you were kind of fine. And in Legion, there was no raid buffs at all. No, I'm not saying it's This is a PI. totally different world. When we were stacking four classes, Instead of having six classes to choose from, we had 20. So, totally different world. What classes do you think and why? This is an interesting uh, experiment. No, I don't want to hear Locke, Warrior, and Mage, and Rogue. I don't want to hear... That's too boring. Tell me tell me one of them, and only if you can tell me why you think you would bring them. I'll Outlaw, go for Rogue, Someone said crew, it. cooldown reduction. Okay, so that's a good take. With uh, yeah, Restless Crew too. existing, again, it still hasn't been implemented. This is definitely one of the most controversial abilities in the game, but it also hasn't, like, no one knows how good it's going to be. If I were to mm -hmm. guess the power level of Restless Crew, by the way, I think Restless Crew will end up being no better than the power level and cooldown reduction of one Night Fae Fairy Priest from this expansion without the legendary, but just split amongst four people. I think it's going to be something that is marginal and something you can, you can like give a few classes some benefit, like a kindling mage or the new kindling for hunter or like demo warlock or something. But it's not going to be like, for example, people are assuming that Restless Crew is going to be like current Night Fae Priest, but you're giving Night Fae Priest to four people with one character. If that was the case, I would agree with you. You would bring four outlaw rogues to every fight for the rest of the expansion. However, there is no yeah, way it is that good without it being removed or nerfed. There's also no way it's going to stack. It would also be removed or nerfed in that scenario. So I think this is something that you won't see four of. I could see you running multiple rogues because Cloak is still really good. They gave rogues a lot of... I mean, I'm a bit confused about the question because... Um, it's, it's just all... Um, Like, you could literally stack any class to four for any reason, right? I think every single spec or class would have a reason to be stacked to four if the certain circumstance is being met, right? If you need four gateways for whatever reason, you need four warlocks, right? If you need uh, four life grips, you need four priests. If you need four innervates you need for moonkins you know like there's so many different kinds of reasons that could make you stack a certain class so, so i don't really know what the point is also just damage like if a certain class is a shit no damage then you just get that class four times right so it's like new <laughs> new stuff they give rogues a a raid cooldown and bring bringing more rogues you can bring a stacking attack speed reduction so like bringing two sounds good and at that point you're just like okay we just want two more so that's about it for rogue so basically because of restless crew yes however for immunities i think highly unlikely because then you're just adding too many melee uh what's the next one you guys said shadow priest you guys i thought you were going to say the really boring ones you guys are actually really smart you're mm -hmm. exactly right i think shadow priest is randomly a class i think you could see four priests but i don't know if you see four shadow priest specs because if you look at like a normal raid comp right there's not a lot of classes that are that insane with PI. So the scenario I keep using with Warcraft logs, I'm saying, well, just look at a priest's look at a priest's bar on pure single target on 95th percentile. They're third currently. Now think about how much damage PI gives someone. It's about like two to three k, but very specifically on fire mages and uh, demon warlocks. Really, there's a there's like unholy on the opener is still really good. I think there's quite a few classes that get a lot of damage from PI. You just never give them PI because they don't gain as much standards, right? Like, Demo gets a lot, Fire Mage gets a lot, um, even Munkin gets a lot, right? Uh, Hunters gain a lot as well. DKs can, can gain a lot as well. The other Warlock, like, not just Demo Warlock, but also Destro Warlock gets a lot. <laughs> 
So yeah, I don't know about the other sex, Hunter's but, good. Yeah, that's like a lot. A couple other classes. I'm pure single. It's good, but it is not 3K. It's close to 3K. Yeah, it's, it's not definitely 3K. not that so much. So let's just say you're giving it to the very, very best class in the raid. Usually you only have like two or three of them, but the fourth one wouldn't have as much value, especially when you're removing ranged DPS slots by bringing more priests. But yeah, priest is a very stackable class, but because they get twins of the sun priestess in their actual class tree, basically if you're ever looking at a statistics of how good classes are in single target on average with a bunch of sample size your shadow priest is just gonna have like look at my mouse like this much of a bar added to their bar the entire rest of the expansion it's actually yep. even more best case scenario it's up to here so that means they could be actually bottom tier as fuck which by the way people be complaining all the time and blizzard would buff them to be middle of the pack minimum and then when they're middle of the pack minimum they're that just bringing the most raid dps per class than any other spec in the game super powerful very high yeah. IQ. All right, give me another one. What is another class you think has even the potential? By the way, I'm just going to be fully real with you guys. I'm pretty sure with the new raid buff situation, there might be one or two bosses in the entire expansion that are killed world first with four of the same spec in. I think it's basically not going to happen. That's why this exercise is fun. Because you're saying if it will right, happen, what are the extremes that would allow it to happen? It's extremely rare for that to happen. Hey, Frog, what's up? Evokers? I'm, I'm sorry, gonna stop do you, you right want there. me to There's not no watch your videos? Just, no, no. You, I would say you're probably going to bring an Evoker on every fight, although you don't have to. to get views, we would have to see how they, that's how my they bad. work I out. There's just no fucking way. No. Four Warlocks. I misunderstood. So I'm going to stop promoting pick. it, okay? Warlocks are typically very strong. They're also unkillable. Sometimes you need multiple gateways. However, outside of Gahoon, you've never needed more than two. So, you know, outside of an outlier, that's not really a thing. I think Warlock's a weak pick. Warlock is probably less likely than every class we've talked about so far to be stacked to four. Yes, it's a really good class, and yes, it could be tuned high enough to bring them. It's just really unlikely that that's true. In fact, if they make if they make you bring these three classes too, and they actually fix this, then you might have like four slots. Like, it's basically impossible to do this. So many people are saying Elemental Shaman, and they are all right. I don't think you'll ever see four Elemental Shaman killing a boss this expansion. And that's for one reason and one... I think... There's one thing... Okay, so, I, I think Max really wants uh, Shamans, Death Knights, and Hunters to have, like, a unique uh, rate utility. Because all the other classes have one, right? And I understand where he's coming from, but if anything, I think we should ask for less buffs rather than asking for more. Right? Because I understand it's a bit weird if only three classes in the game don't have buffs i understand that is definitely weird but the solution is not to give them as buffs as well in my opinion especially because then we have 13 classes with buffs and we can rate with 10 people already we have flex rating right so what let's say you want to do a 10 man raid, and you literally do not have the opportunity to put every single class buff into your raid like you just uh, can't fit them all Right, which is definitely super awkward. So it by default, if you give more than ten classes a buff, a damage buff, then by default it right. would make oh hey, it would make um, bigger rate groups better, which I don't think we want that right for the game. Or Blizzard doesn't want that. I personally don't care because <laughs> I always do bigger rates anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me. One reason only. They don't have really anything that necessarily puts them in the raid. I think they're going to rework the mana totem. I think this is an underrealized thing. So you could maybe have some value to healers. But even then, dude, look at end boss kills. Healers have like 20% mana, 30% mana, 50% mana. Maybe one healer is close to Oom. Like, mana is like not insanely necessary, to be honest with you. Especially when you're just given amongst a group of healers instead of one specifically, like Innervate. But Shaman's damage profile is really robust. I mean, they're just going to be the best funnel class in the game. Enhance hmm. is pretty cool. You won't see four enhance ever. It would just be Ellie. There's no way you can bring four of one melee outside of one specific one, which we're going to get into in a second. Here's the one reason you won't see four elemental shamans in an end boss kill in the race world first. Because no guild has four players that are goaded at Ellie. It's a very <laughs> rare class to have people alt and also have people play. You'd be able to find good players to field it. There's just no way you'd throw away so much potential to bring a class that doesn't have an immunity. Like any time you've brought classes before that were super OP, like fire mages at the end of BFA, they at least were like really strong defensively and like had very little downsides to them. They were also just turbo broken. Yeah, maybe some Ankh tech. It's, it's definitely way less likely than everything that was named so far. Way less likely. I think the single most stackable class next expansion is Warrior. 
I think it's by a good bit. Maybe Unholy DK too, because I think Warrior's Execute is going to def. Wait, but Warrior. Okay, so he he listed these classes as um, like requirement classes, but Warrior is not required, right? Oh well, I guess you need one for a battle shot, right? Okay, never mind. I'm stupid. I guess it's a bit weird because I I think they he listed the classes for you for defensive and offensive um, buffs. Because technically speaking, you do not need a warlock in your raid. It doesn't give you extra damage, right? It gives you Hellstone and Gateway, which is obviously incredibly good. But you don't need that. I don't I don't think that warlock is actually required. Even compared to the other classes, right? Because I mean a stamina buff is better than Hellstone in my opinion. Especially in like casual groups. Because in casual groups, half the time, people don't even use Hearthstone, uh, right? And obviously, a, a magic damage increase is much better than a Hearthstone. And Mark of the Wild is much better than a Hearthstone, and so on and so on, right? Intellect and so on. So I wouldn't necessarily say Warlock is super required. I would be on the bottom side of the list. Priest. Even Priest, I wouldn't say, is necessarily required, because Stamina buff... Of course, when we speak about high-end rating, then of course you want the Stamina buff. But if you're talking about like more casual rating, I think stamina buff is not as needed because most like stamina is really really good when things kill you, like do like burst damage kind of. And outside of burst damage, stamina is not like super insane. Like you can you can definitely kill bosses um, without a stamina buff. And paladin is also not that required. Yeah, um, I, I don't think devil aura is that important either. So I would definitely like uh, stagger these required classes a little bit because the classes that are definitely, in my opinion, required for like damage is a demon hunter, monk, druid, mage, warrior. What does evoker give again? I forgot. What does evoker do again? Come on, hover. No, <laughs> that's the wrong thing. <laughs> Move into the air. Okay, we don't need that either. Yeah, I don't need to need that evoker buff. That seems kind of... Uh... Right? Like, you don't need that shit. In my opinion, at least. So it's like... Yeah, a lot of these classes are not like required required. In my opinion fault be better than unholy dk's but if it's really fast and they have dark i'm pretty sure like, death knight i'm gonna make a really good example right because shaman and death knight and hunter they don't really have any specific class buffs like this but if there was a boss where death grip is really good i would 100 percent like let's say i have a, have a rate of 10 people and i have all of these classes in the in the raid if there was a boss that required a grip, or where a grip would make it a lot better, then I would not even blink before kicking one of these classes to invite the Death Knight, right? Like, I would easily remove the Evoker to get a Death Knight in. Like, I don't need the Evoker, but I definitely need a grip. You know what I'm saying? I would also not mind to remove the Warlock to get a Death Knight in. I would also not mind to remove the Paladin to get a Death Knight in. You know? So I don't think I don't think a lot of these class buffs are like required required unless you're talking about like high end rating, which obviously you're gonna have everything there. And same goes with like shaman stuff and hunter stuff. Hunter doesn't really have anything that like Death Knight obviously is grip, which grip is pretty unique and no one else can do the same thing, so it makes sense to have Death Knights, right? Shaman, on the other hand, doesn't necessarily have anything super unique. They have Wind Fury, though. Enhancement Shaman does, which is really good. Uh, Elemental and Rasta Shaman. I mean, they have some stuff, right? Rasta Shaman has Ankh Totem and SLT. Like, uh, Rasta Shaman is a bunch of utility. Elemental Shaman doesn't really have anything. Uh, so I guess that is a little bit of an issue. <laughs> and Hunter also doesn't have really anything, but I don't know that. Druid gives Mark of the Wild. 
for whatever reason. Unholy DK in execute phase with Dark Arbiter during Dark Arbiter or during the Gargoyle is going to out DPS every class in the game, including Warrior. However, you saying Mex talks about world first? I'm not. I don't think he does. Mex usually doesn't speak about world first stuff when he has these discussions. Mex usually speaks in like general terms for like everyone a bit. And at least he didn't specifically mention this was for world first. Because of course, of course, world first. Uh, that it's a very different discussion. Thanks for thirteen months, Duners. What's up? On longer I execute didn't hear him phase say that, fights, I think Warrior is going to absolutely machine gun windmill dunk every single person in the raid. In the last couple of expansions, they nerfed Warrior's execute and they buffed other classes' execute to where even in a oh, lot of cases, well Warrior wasn't even the, the best question? execute class in the game, even though that's kind oh, of their well. identity. And well, execute really matter. is more often than then not this whole video the <laughs> most important niche in the game and by far the hardest part of the the hardest part of the fight on the hardest fight in almost every raid tier that's ever existed. So execute just has tremendous value. They gave warriors way better execute in this expansion. And not to mention that as opposed to shaman, you're not just bringing someone who does a really good type of damage. Really. Okay, you know what? I just want to know the conclusion because the video is called the problem with class balance. And I want to know what the point is of this whole discussion. Not them. Their single target got fucking <laughs> shit on by other tanks. They gave them a talent that made Soul Cleave do more damage to their primary target, and they gave them the hunt. They're kind of addressing everything that kept them out of raids previously. Currently, we have no Shaman in the raid. There's really not a reason you need Shaman. I would actually say the next most likely class you were to bring based on design only and no longer tuning is actually a second <laughs> priest. And that's just because Disc is absolutely fucking wild. And Barrier is way too good of a spell. Could be a Shadow Priest too. Shadow Priest also has a ton of... So if you look at like Barrier and Shadow Priest, there's like just a really high chance you play a second priest, I think. What's the next class you bring? I think Rogue is a strong option. Again, I'm going to completely disregard Wrestle's crew because I don't know if that's going to stay in the game. If it does come in the game, I, I think it'll I be think I think I understand the I point now. I think if he's basically make... just like picking out classes on how you would fill the raids that are like more likely to be useful for the raids compared to other classes, right? So he's basically saying he's basically saying that shamans, death knights, and hunters are not likely to be needed. Well, death knight is an exception because of uh, grip. Well, other classes would be likely to be brought multiple times, right? Like Druid for Innervate or Stampeding Roy or whatever. Um, priest for PI and blah, 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 right? Um, I just don't necessarily understand the point of the discussion because the same thing already happened before. Like, like nothing really changes for World First. Because in Shadowlands... Um, if Rogue brought nothing in Shadowlands, so you just don't bring a Rogue to World First. Unless their damage is good. Like, we had that same situation already, right? <laughs> like, there were multiple World First skills without a single Rogue in there. We had multiple World First skills without a single Death Knight. We had uh, multiple World First without Shamans. We had multiple World First without Druids. You know, like, stuff like that just happens. No matter how they do it. Unless they give every single class something unique, but then that's a downside, in my opinion. For World First, it might be an upside for a class variety, because if every single class has a unique buff or is something unique that gives value to the raid, then they will 100% be in a World First kill, right? Every single class will be represented in a World First kill. But is that the goal of the class buffs, to have all of the classes represented in a World First rates? I don't think so. The goal of the class buffs is to give everyone uh, some sort of opportunity and value to be invited to like pack groups and whatever, right? And I think giving every single class uh, a buff would be like worse than having only some of them have a buff, right? Because otherwise you're struggling to literally find the players and you're weaker if you don't have them. As I said before, 10 classes right now are somewhat required. I don't, wouldn't really say they're all required, but somewhat. And you can raid with 10 people. If you give 13 classes a class buff or something that is required, then you're automatically in a disadvantage if you have less than 14 players. 
which is definitely really bad for the heroic rating, normal mode rating, and so on, because there's flex rate sizes, and uh, yeah, if you want to rate with 10 and you automatically have a disadvantage because you can't even fit all of the class buffs in there, then that sucks. And then I don't mind if some classes have no utility at all or no buff, in my opinion, because why? Like, why does every, why does every class need a buff? <laughs> Just to be represented in a race to first? I don't think that's important. I personally don't think that we need to have a shaman in the race to world first or a hunter or a death knight. I don't care, you know, <laughs> like, I, I honestly don't care if it's, the, if it's in there. And if they really want it to be in there, then just balance the damage properly and then you'll probably see it in there, maybe, possibly. And in your normal mode group, in your normal casual raid, it doesn't really matter. You can play whatever you want anyway, right? So. Can you bring these three classes too? Probably Paladin, that's more of a guess. These four are really solid. It's probably better to bring a second one of these before a single one. Did you want every class represented in the race to will first? I don't think so. <laughs> like, you always have to distinguish between a normal raid and a race to will first. If you want every class to be represented in a race to will first, you have to give every single class a unique buff that gives you value. I don't think Ian said it that way. I'm pretty sure Ian did not say he wants every class to be represented in a race to roll first. Uh, if he said that, he needs to link me the, the, the quote. Because that makes no sense for him to say that. Because why would he care at all about what's represented in a race to roll first? <laughs> I mean, there's a difference between saying that they want every class to have value compared to saying, like, we want every class to be in race to first. Like, there's, that's a big difference, right? Because the race to will first obviously is going to play the most optimal thing all the, all of the time. While anything, ex anything outside of the race to will first doesn't care about certain things if it's, like, a, such a small gain that it's barely noticeable, right? Like, for example, that Evoker movement speed CDR. Like, do you, want, do you need this in a normal race? I very highly doubt it. Same goes for some other stuff. Do you, do you need to have uh, three PIs in, in a normal race? Do you need to have multiple like spell wardings you need to have multiple like cdr group buffs from an outdoor rogue like none of this is needed right one of all of these things except for death knight i mean bringing a 20 percent attack auto attack thing to the boss is pretty pretty good knowing that that's no longer in the game for warlocks and rogues only bring it as the second class to a raid 2330 And it's just about who you bring. I completely disagree. You want to know why? Because I... The Hunter. Then here's here's just the overall argument. And we talked about this earlier. What I'm doing right now is talking about how to optimally fill a raid. But sometimes that can take away from the argument itself. And anytime you start talking about raid spots, people instantly disregard this and think this is a top 50 guild problem. And it's just about who you bring. I completely disagree. You want to know why? Because I can fill my raid easily times two if we never have to bring some of these classes. It'll never affect me, I don't care. I have no reason to care personally. It doesn't bother me. What bothers me is that the perception is that why this is important is because of top level play. When in reality, if you're a hunter player next expansion in this current scenario, you feel worse. It's not the scenario where people are looking at the top mythic plus comps, people are looking at the world first comps and only inviting those people to their raids. 
It's not a perception issue, it's reality. This class has way less going for it than these do. End of story. Shamans and DKs to a lesser extent, but Hunter, 100%. Every person feels this way. In a 10 to 15 man AOTC guild, if you're a- Okay, like, I definitely understand his argument, right? Like, I, I definitely understand his argument. But in my opinion, giving those three classes another buff would be worse for a for for like a normal mythic guild, in my opinion. I honestly think, cause what so he, he's basically disregarding the fact that there's upsides and downsides, right? Of course, if you are a hunter player, right? If you are a hunter then not having a class buff is bad for you. But we're not talking about we're not talking about specific class right now. We're talking about a raid. We're talking about a guild, right? And the more class buffs there are, the more classes are required or have a buff, the worse it actually is for like a normal casual guild because they're forced to find these specific classes, right? And they need to get them into the raids. And if they don't have them, they have a disadvantage, right? If you have less class buffs, then you are free to fill the rest of your... Because, I mean, this is very simple, right? It's actually very easy to look at. If you just look at a normal guild, right? Like, I, I, do, I do agree with... Like, what Max is saying is definitely very correct. That if you have a... If you want to build an optimal raid comp, you do not need hunters. You do not need shamans. You do not need DKs. Like, that is 100% true. But I don't think that's... A dis like, I don't think that's necessarily bad for a normal guild. Because let's say, uh, let's say you have like 23 players, right? Uh, I'm not going to do class colors, but that's too difficult. <laughs> okay, so let's say you have 200 players right now, right? And the rest of your classes are like all, like you have a druid. I'm only talking about DPS right now. You have two hunters, you have two moonkins, you have a mage, you have a warlock, you have a warrior, you have a monk, you have a demon hunter. Wait, let me put this all the way up so I can... Uh, you have a rogue, you have a shaman. How many damage dealers do we need? 14? Okay, what, what are we missing? You have a DK. Well, actually, let's... Yeah, let's just say we have a DK. Um, what else do we have? Let's say we have another warrior, we have another warlock, we have another Pella, and we have an evoker, and a shadow priest. Okay, this is like way more players than you're probably gonna have, right? Like, cause this is already 17 damage dealers, and most people don't have 17 damage dealers in a guild. Maybe, uh, you know, let's just add one more, just to, I wrote warlock with whatever. <laughs> Uh, did I miss any damage dealer? I don't think I did. And did I? Let's say we have another mage. Okay, whatever, right? So you, you build your group. You have tank, tank, healer, 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 healer. Right? And then you build your buffs. So you need a mage. So you have a mage, right? Then you want a warrior. Oh, fuck, this is too complicated. You want a monk. And I'm not even assuming that you get class buffs from your healers and your tanks, which obviously there's a, definitely a possibility to, to, to have that, right? So I'm just saying you get all of your class buffs from, from the damage healers. So what else do you need? Let's just say you need a warlock. Then uh, you need a druid for Margaret the Wild. Uh, now we have 12. Okay, what, what else do we need? Let's say we even need a Shadow Priest for stamina buff, even though I very highly doubt that you need that. We have the mage. We... I don't, I don't understand why I would need a rogue. He kind of said that rogues are necessary. I don't know what, what for. Let's say you even need a red paladin. All of this is incredibly unlikely to happen, by the way. Because, of course, you're going to have a healer 
or a tank covering some of these buffs, right? Oh yeah, the rogue with the the DR, yeah, the DR. I see. Okay, damage reduction. Then fuck, wrong thing. Okay, so now we have all of the required classes. So we still have five spots, right? Okay, let's also say Evoker is required, even though I very highly disagree that it's required. But let's just assume. Okay, so now we have four spots, right? And again, keep in mind, all of this is incredibly unlikely. Surely you're going to be covering some of these buffs with healers and tanks. I covered all of the buffs now with the damage dealers. And I still have four spots. So now... I'm the guild leader, right? And I can bring any of those classes. I can bring a hunter, a druid, a warlock, shaman, DK, warrior, mage. I don't understand why I, as a raid leader from a normal guild, would invite anything but my best players at this point. Right? Like, I, I, don't, I don't think it makes sense to say that I would invite a druid for another Stampeding War or another Innervate. If, if I think that my hunter is a really good player, right? Like, why would I not invite my two hunters if I think they're both good? Like, why, why not? I don't get it. I don't think a normal guild is, like, min-maxing their intermates or their competing wars or their... I don't, I don't really know what you would be min-maxing or all these class, right? So now I still have two spots, right? So I bring my DK because the DK is a good player. And I bring my second Warlock, because Warlock is good on this boss fight or whatever, right? So, yeah. And I have 20 players, and I have two hunters in my raids. Even though they don't bring anything special, right? But why would I not bring them? I, underst I do understand the point. Yeah, I'm not bringing my Shaman, because the Shaman doesn't bring anything special, and he's not a good player compared to the others. So, yeah. You obviously do have a disadvantage if... Uh, because, so let's say, um, I have one shaman, and I have one mage. Well, okay, I'm gonna give you a specific example, right? So I have one mage player and one shaman. They're both below average players. Okay? Compared to the rest of my roster. The mage gets invited and the shaman does not. Because the mage gives me intellect, right? Now, you could say this shaman is at a disadvantage now, right? Which is correct. But is like, do we need to invite players that are not so good than the rest of my players? Like, is that how it's supposed to work? You know? Like, wouldn't that isn't that a bad thing? If I have to invite two of my below average players because they give a buff? You know, like you'd understand what I'm saying, right? This is for an average guild, for like an average mythic guild. Why would you want to force them to invite the shaman if he's below average? Because if you give the shaman a class buff, right? Let's say he's class buff something, something. Now all of a sudden you need to invite the shaman and the mage that are both below average. Instead of inviting your second warlock player who is much better at the game, right? What if I have three really good warlock players? Uh... Dude, is that how you write Warlock? Dude, I'm so confused now. Is that how you write it? Is it CK? Is it one? Is it without C? Dude, looking at this word just confuses me now. It looks wrong. <laughs> but yeah, let's say I have three really good Warlock players in my guild. But now, all of a sudden, every single... Uh, every single class is a buff. Like, let's assume that is the case, right? then I can only invite one of my Warlocks because I need to invite my Shaman and my Mage and my DK and my uh, Hunter? Even though they're all like not so good. Like I have to invite all of these w instead of inviting these two. You know what I'm saying? So that that's why I am saying... And I know that like Max generally agrees with not having class buffs is better. Like I do understand that. But I am disagreeing with his take of if you're accepting the current... Because right now, we're kind of just accepting the fact that we have class buffs. Even though everyone is against class buffs in the first place, right? I, I personally don't want class buffs. Pretty sure Max also doesn't want class buffs, right? I think we all agree on that. 
Um, but Max is saying, if we have X amount of classes with buffs, then all of the classes should have buffs. And I'm disagreeing. I'm saying the less classes have buffs, the better. You never want more classes with buffs. I think you always want less. So I don't think it's a solution to give hunters uh, DKs and uh, shamans anything at all. Because again, as I said, in this situation, th the more class buffs, the buffs there are, the less freedom you give to guilds. And I think that's bad. Because you always have to look at it in two different eyes. You have to look at it in a guild's eyes, like in a, in a raid leader's perspective. And you have to look at it in an individual player's perspective, right? If you're an individual player, then I totally understand that if you're a hunter, you feel bad because you don't have a class buff. That's an individual player that thinks this way, though, right? And to overcome that, you just need to play good, though. Like, yes, if, you, if you're a hunter and you play average or below average, you probably won't get invited because you don't bring anything, right? Which sucks for you. But if you are a good player, you definitely have a spot in the raid. I don't see why you wouldn't. Because in, an every, in a normal guild, in a normal mythic guild, you don't have 25 players that are all the same skill level. That's just not how it works, right? In, in a guild, you have some players that are better and some players that are worse. And if I am forced to invite all of the worst players because they all give class buffs, then that's bad for me as a guild, right? So I don't, I don't agree with giving more class buffs because that just gives less and less freedom to guilds. And if you, if you play a class that does not have a class buff, then you just need to... Like, you can totally be invited to the raid by just playing well, in my opinion. Like, you, you're not going to be benched just because you don't have a class buff if you're a good player. Like, that's not going to happen, right? It is going to happen, though, if we have more class buffs. Because if every single class is a class buff, or like spec or whatever, then it is very possible that a good player has to be benched. Like in this situation, for example, right? Let's say you have three really good war Warlock players, right? Let's say they're like super good players here. And all of these are like below average. And you cannot fit your three Warlocks into the raids. You just can't, right? Because you need the Hunter buff, you need the DK buff, you need the Mage buff, you need the Shaman buff. So you have to invite all of these people, right? Which I just don't see how that's good for the guild as a whole. For the individual player, I can totally see how it's good for them. Because it's more likely for them to get invited. But yeah, I, I just generally disagree with the statement that we want more buffs. I think that's the opposite of what we should be asking for. <laughs> I totally understand that it really sucks for these three specific classes. Like, I 100% get it. But I just don't think for the average guild or for the average player, it would be a good thing if they give them buffs as well. Like, the less, the better. <laughs> if they remove buffs from classes, you are right. But since that is not happening, then it's a problem. Why? Uh, it's about tuning too. We're not talking about tuning right now. That's a completely different topic. You might play your class well, but if it's not tuned to be amazing and not bring anything, then you are fucked. We're, we're assuming that every class is the same in damage. We're assuming that every single class is the same amount of damage. That's the assumption we're making, right? Again, I'm going to go back to this uh, example here that I have. If the hunter does the exact same damage as my warrior, balance-wise, but the player that plays the hunter is better than the warrior, then why would I invite a second warrior over with my hunter? I just don't see a reason. Like, the skill level, it will never be equal... In, a, in an average guild. So you always take the best players once you have covered your basic buffs. So what I'm saying is the more buffs there are required, the worse it is for, for an average guild. Because the less freedom they have in the players they can choose to invite. And that sucks for a normal guild. 
That's that's my argument that I'm making. <clears throat> you make it sound like bad players only ticket to rating is choosing the right class with the right buffs. Or uh, I mean, yeah. That is that is technically what I'm saying, yeah. Or you, ch you join a guild that is the same skill level as you are, right? Like, if, if you want to raid in a guild where the average raider is better than you, then of course you have a higher chance to get invited if you provide a class buff. Because, I mean, <laughs> but that's just common sense, right? If you want to play a class that does not have a class buff and you're worse than the average player in your guild, then I don't. Then you need to join another guild where the skill level of the other players is equal to yours. And then you will get invited even without a class buff, right? Are you ever going to improve your game if you're not playing with players with higher skill level than you have? I mean, this is completely irrelevant. Like, this, this, this argument about bad players needing to be invited into a raid is, like, the dumbest thing. <laughs> like, like what, are you, what are you arguing for? Are you saying that if you are a worse player than the rest of your guild, that you should be invited? And that's why you want to have a class buff? Like, is that your argument right now? Because I don't know what to say about that, if that is the argument. <laughs> like, I don't know what to say about that. Like, that just makes no sense to me whatsoever. If, <laughs> like, I don't know. If you think that this is what you need, well, then just re-roll to a class with a class buff. I don't know, man. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, at that point, just play a mage or something. I don't know. Or do you even have to? I don't know. <laughs> the point is that hunters are the only class that don't bring a single unique utility. Why are they the only ones? Again, this is... This, this whole argument about um giving like this is the exact same argument as the interrupt with the healers i talked about this before all of the healers have an interrupt now except holy priest and disc priest and i personally am kind of okay with this decision because again i'm thinking the less healers have an interrupt the better so, yeah, I honestly wish no, none of the healers had an interrupt. Like, if I, if I would have to choose, I would remove interrupts from all of the healers. <laughs> but if we have a situation where there's some healers having an interrupt and some don't, then I still prefer that over all healers having an interrupt. And the same goes with class buffs. I prefer not a single class having a class buff. But if the option is... 10 classes having a class buff versus 13 classes having a class buff, then I would still choose the 10 over the 13. Like, that's just my my opinion, yeah? If you disagree, that's fine. I, I gave you my argument. I explained why I want less class buffs over more. If you disagree, that's fine. But I think I think my my argument makes a lot of sense, personally. So if you disagree, whatever you know, that's 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 okay. Let's see what he talks about at the end of this. A hunter here, player, so. which by the way, it's like the most popular class in the game. I'm pretty sure, or right there, it is. People are going to be playing the characters that they love and that are their mains, and they're going to feel pressure in heroic, not normal. You can do normal without any raid buffs. Like in heroic, they feel bad that they don't bring a raid buff or something to make the raid valuable or better. Or sometimes, and this happens in not super high-end guilds, 
they actually play their alt because it's just better. And then they're playing a character they don't like as much. So this was just a super long-winded example of explaining to you kind of the state of where things are currently in Dragonflight. And hopefully that shines the light for a developer or anyone else watching exactly how class balance is at the moment. It's a Blizzard problem. I don't think every class needs a raid buff or a raid cooldown. Because as Ian said, that's just kind of boring. Like to have everyone just have a one hour raid cooldown that you need. That is kind of boring. They just need more than they have now. And it wouldn't be that big of a deal if it wasn't just... The problem with your argument seems to be that you assume I have to bring the bad player for a 13th buff when you as a guild can search for a player with that buff who is above your average. Okay, well, that makes no sense, right? You can't just assume that you're gonna get that good players into your guild that play the correct class. Like, uh, that's the same argument that I am making, except it's much more unlikely. Like, yeah, if you, if you go back to the argument and uh, I'm basically... What you're basically saying is that uh, you could just replace this mage that is below average with another mage that is good. Yeah, okay, but that's that could happen with literally anything. It, like, the class buffs don't change that, right? You can, you can, let's say you have a hunter doesn't give a class buff right now, right? You could get a hunter that is good and just invite the hunter all the time to the raid, no matter if he has a class buff or not. Right? Like, I don't necessarily see why recruiting good players interferes with anything what, that I suggested. Because, of course, you could replace every... Like, technically speaking, I could invite... <laughs> I could invite six Warlock players that are all good and still work my comp around it. Right? I mean, if, if for whatever reason I have six Warlock players that are really, really good at the game, I can still do that. Would I ask my Warlocks to reroll to something else for next year? Possibly. Very likely, even. Surely the raid leader after the tier is going to speak to these Warlock players like, Hey guys, <laughs> could one of you maybe play uh, something else? Like a mage or whatever, you know? Surely that's going to happen. And it might suck. That one of these warlocks has to reroll, but that's just always like a thing, right? You always want to cover a lot of specs with your raid group, even even disregarding class buffs. Like even without class buffs existing, like just just think about Shadowlands. In Shadowlands, we didn't have well, like, we had class buffs, but we didn't have as many class buffs as Dragonflight. But we still like in my guild, we still. Like, have play players re-rolling to different classes and different specs because we have too many of the same. Or, like, you, you want to diversify your, your classes anyway. Like, no matter how many class buffs you have, you kind of want to diversify your roster to make sure that you're not having too many eggs in one basket if that ends up being bad, right? Because if, if I have six Warlock players and then Warlocks ends up being dog shit, which we don't know beforehand, then we're screwed, right, as a guild. So that's why almost all the time you're asking your players to play other things if you have too many of the same spec, right? And that is not even thinking about class buffs. Of course, if you have if you have two mage players and they both quit, you'll have to find a new mage, right? Either one of your players has to reroll to mage or you have to find a new one. And with Dragonflight, there's going to be more class buffs, so this is going to be an even bigger problem. And I, it would be an even bigger problem if every class would have a class buff. Because right now, if your guild doesn't have a DK, you do not need to recruit a DK. Right? Because you don't necessarily need one. But what if DKs have a class buff? Well, then all of a sudden you need a DK. What if you currently don't have a hunter in your guild? Well, then you don't need to recruit a hunter, right? Necessarily. You kind of want to have a hunter because hunters are have some niches usually pretty strong in certain situations. But you don't need the hunter, right? And all I'm saying is the more class buffs there are, the more restricted these skills are and the more specific classes they have to bring. And that sucks. So in my opinion, again, less class buffs is better, right? Because I don't want, uh, I don't feel like it's a good thing that guilds should be needing specific classes, right? I 
I mean, obviously, it always comes down to balancing. I think these class buffs are not as important as people think it is. Really. Because almost always it's about balancing. In my opinion, if, you sh if you're going to share class buffs, because some people have brought that up, right? Let's say not only Mage would give Intellect, but also Warlock would give Intellect. If you do that, then there's literally no point to having class buffs at all. Like the point of class buffs is to bring the class. So if you, if you spread the utility across classes, then there's no point to have them at all. Then you might as well just remove them at that point, in my opinion. Right? Because, uh, yeah, that, that completely, like, ruins the, the idea behind them. What I see is if there isn't class buffs, you would see raid come similar to WAC Classic, a Molten Core with 15 Warriors. Uh, class stacking would definitely be a much bigger problem if there would no would be no class buffs, right? But I mean, at this point, I'm not even arguing against class buffs as a whole, because I know it is what it is. Like, there's just absolutely no way they will remove class buffs for Dragonflight. It's just not happening, right? I'm not even arguing against that, because I know they won't change it. I'm just arguing against more class buffs. But I mean, we can look at we can look at previous comps, right? Where people, if you look at Wowhead, I'm not sure if Wowhead still has. Actually, I meant uh, Wow Progress. I'm not sure if Wow Progress still has. Um, probably not. Now that I think about it, I think the previous tiers are not really saved there anymore. When did we, be, when did we get class buffs? BFA, okay. None of this is working. Okay, this seems to be broken. Okay, then this doesn't, this, uh, this is already BFA, right? Man, none of this is working, fuck. Hellfire Citadel. I don't think this is here anymore. Yeah, fuck. I guess you can't really see this properly. What I was trying to, to prove to you is that uh, even in previous iterations before class buffs, classes were not stacked as much as people thought. Like, pe people have this idea that if they would remove class buffs now, that people would stack 15 of the same class. But then why didn't that happen before we had class buffs? Like, why wasn't that true? I guess you could argue that the guilds, especially the Raceable First guilds, are more advanced nowadays and they would like min max more than they did in the past. Right? And that is correct, I agree. But do we, like, why do we. Are you, are you specifically saying that we should introduce class buffs for the Raceable First? Because I, I personally disagree. Yeah. If the. If the if, Echo and Liquid want to stack 10 Warlocks? Then so be it, in my mind. You know? Because whenever you think of the time before class buffs, that's exactly what would happen if they would remove them now. Except in the race will first. But that's, why does it concern us that much? Like, do you really care if they have 10 Warlocks in the race will first? If it's like a tiny little gain for them, like, if Warlock does, like, a sliver of damage more than something else, and they just t stack 10 of them, so be it, you know? Like, I just don't understand why it's that big of a deal. <laughs> That's so loud. Like, this is, this is, uh, Archimond. Archimond has, uh... Like, if you look at class stacking, right, there's, uh... Three warriors, but one of them is a tank. 
So they stack two DPS warriors, two rogues, three hunters, two mages, two moonkins. So I wouldn't really consider this class stacking, right? There isn't any classes represented four times. I would say four is like the, the minimum for it to be considered class stacking, right? If there's less than four, I would not necessarily consider it class stacking. So the only thing you could really consider it being stacked is hunters here. And this is Archimon. This is... Uh... Then we can look at all the other last bosses I guess we have. What's, what else is there? Uh, Black Hand. Black Hand. Black Hand, you can consider Moonkins as being stacked, right? You have four Moonkins here. Four Moonkins, three Rogues, three Hunters. So this is definitely more of like a stack going on for the... <laughs> this is actually so funny. I swear I did not specifically move this to my POV. Like I honestly swear I didn't do that. <laughs> like I just randomly moved somewhere in the, in the video to look at the comp. And this this is the second time it actually turned out to be my POV. It happened on Black on Argument as well. I swear I didn't do it. <laughs> Purpose, I swear. Anyway, um What else do we check? Uh <laughs> Lei Shen, I guess. Okay, sure. Okay, this time I didn't get my POV. Alright, uh, I guess Leishan is a bit hard to look at because there's 25. It's 25 players. I, I think that's hard to compare. Because there are four Warlocks in here, but I wouldn't consider four class stacking when there's 25 spots, right? Or what do you say? There's also four Rogues. Yeah, I don't know. Leishan is a bit too far back. Let's look at things that are slightly uh, further ahead. Uh, like Gul'dan. Okay, World First Kill, Gul'dan. Man, what are these fragments, frames? Hate them. <laughs> Alright, so Gul'dan, we have three Shadow Priests. Three Rogues. Yeah, that's it. So not really class stacking here, right? And again, we're looking at videos from World First Kills before class buffs. Yeah? Just to, <laughs> just to make sure that we all understand. Okay, then, uh, we looked at Gul'dan. Then what else? What are we missing? Kill Jaden. Okay, oh fuck, does anyone have like a good rage frame? There we go. Okay, kill Jaden. We have five rogues, so that's definitely class stacking, right? We have five rogues, two moonkins, three hunters. Okay, it's only really the rogues that are being stacked here. I wouldn't consider the druids being stacked because they are not, like, they are three different roles, right? Like, it's two guardian, two moonkin, one rested druid. So I wouldn't really consider this class stacking necessarily. At least I, like, everyone looks at class stacking differently, but I personally think. If there's five druids in a raid, but there's th three different roles, then I personally don't consider it class stacking because they're just completely different. Like, they might as well be different classes. Like, a guardian druid and a moonkin, they're so different, they could be considered a different class, in my mind. Like, <laughs> it's not even the same, right? If you compare an outlaw rogue to a sub rogue or something, then it's different because they're much closer to each other than, like, a prod paladin and a rat paladin or something, you know? So, yeah, let's let's say spec stacking, I guess, yeah. But yeah, in this you definitely have a lot of rogues being stacked. 100%. The funny thing is that these rogues were stacked for their defensive utility. Which is pretty funny, because... Technically that would mean that these rogues would still be stacked in dragonflight. Like, if rogues would not get a class buff, these five rogues would still be in a Dragonflight comp on this boss. 
Because they are not there for their damage, they are there for their defensive utility. So these are actually not even related to class buffs. Because I can guarantee you that if these rogues had the same defensive utility that they had back then and this buffs would be released in Dragonflight, they would still have five rogues without any class buff considerations whatsoever. I am pretty, sh pretty certain about that. Okay, uh, one more boss. I'm not gonna look at uh, Emerald Nightmare, because come on. Hell yeah, I guess we can look at. Okay, so there's four Shadow Priests. Which I guess you can consider class decking as well, right? So, four Shadow Priests, three Hunters. Three Hunters, I guess, is fine. Or spec stacking. Let's... We agreed on spec stacking. <laughs> I think Shadow Priest, uh, it's a little bit misleading because on this boss, Shadow Priest was bucked and it did like a shit ton of damage because they're like surrendered to madness. Well, it wasn't really bucked, it was just completely overpowered. It was bucked and overpowered. And again, if surrendered to madness, Shadow Priest would do as much damage in Dragonflight in comparison to what it did back then. You would still see four shadow priests being stacked, completely disregarding class buffs, right? One hundred percent. Like if you have a dragonflight raid group, you would still see four shadow priests, no matter what class buffs they bring or not, right? So again, I think this is—I uh, don't know. So I don't know. My conclusion is, or at least it's not a conclusion, but it's like. The point that I'm trying to make. The point that I'm trying to make is that I think without class buffs, you would not see classes being stacked like uncontrollably, uh, uncontrollably by normal guilds. By race to all first guilds, you probably will. Because of course, comparing comparing uh, previous race to all first guilds to the guilds now is not a fair comparison to make. Because Echo and Liquid are definitely min-maxing a lot more than guilds did in the past. So, if, if Helia, like if Legion would be released now, then Liquid and Echo would probably bring 10 Shadow Priests, right? In this, like, iteration of the game. So, it is true that in Erasable First you would see more class decking if there was no um, class buffs. But I personally think that in a normal guild, that is not Erasable First guild, it would be looking more like this, without class buffs. I don't think you would see 10 Shadow Priests in like a normal Mythic Guild, right? Like, why? <laughs> I don't think that would happen. I cannot see how many channel points people have, so no. Yes, Sork, Daddy, but uh, we don't know if that's like final. We didn't, we didn't get a talent rework yet. That's exactly what I'm saying, Sammy. <laughs> so if a DPS spec has very good tuning, they'll be brought regardless of the class buffs. Yeah, that is obviously the case, right? Fallen Avatar was the same issue as KJ. It was just uh, rogues soaking everything. It was it was a defensive utility reasoning why rogues were being brought. Yeah, my point is that class stacking did not happen even before class like before class buffs were a thing. Cuz a lot of people always come up with this argument that like cuz I'm always uh saying that I am against class buffs, right? I'm always saying, "Oh, I wish class buffs would be removed." And there's always some people in chat that say if class buffs were removed, you would see 15 of the same spec being stacked or 15 of the same class being stacked. And I'm just trying to prove you that that's not going to happen because I'm looking 
in the past, where before we had class buffs, class stacking didn't happen either. And we're looking at World of First Guilds, which are specifically min-maxing stuff, right? Like, this, this is literally the World First Guild of Helia. Yeah? And you can see the, the maximum amount of class stacks uh, that you see is like four priests, which of course is being stacked, but it's because they were just insanely good back then. And if this was a normal guild, another raceable first guild, there would be even less class stacking going on, right? And we didn't have class buffs. So I don't necessarily understand why people think that without class buffs, you would all of a sudden see 20 warlock players. Because the one thing that people never understand, or it's not that people don't understand it, but people don't think about the fact that if you're a normal guild, a normal mythic guild, right? Imagine you have zero class buffs. Like, imagine there's absolutely no class buffs. Why? Let's say you have 23 players, or 25 players. Why would you want to stack a certain class before you even know what you need in a certain raid? Because you don't know how tuning and balancing is going to be before the raid comes out. You never knew that. People always ask, oh, what's going to be best in this raid? What's going to be best in this expansion? What's going to be best? Blah, blah, blah. And the truth is, no one ever knows beforehand. Because balancing doesn't happen much longer before the actual raid comes out. So you never really know what's going to be good. So what guilds usually try to do is have as many, like, as, as much of a diverse, like, roster as you can have. Right? You're never going to try, if you have 25 players, you're never going to try and have six, six mages. Like, why? 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 <laughs> what if mage ends up being bad? Disregarding class buffs. Like, what are you going to do with six mages if they're not going to be good? Right? What's the point? So, most of the guilds try to have, like, a maximum of two or three of the same spec to make sure that they're not completely screwed if that spec ends up being bad. Because that's always something that could happen, right? So, I don't necessarily see why all of a sudden class stacking is going to become a thing just because there's no class buffs. It just doesn't make sense, right? Name one tier where all three mage specs were bad. Uh, there were quite a few where all three mage specs were not that good. I don't want to say bad. But um, mage was not very good at the start of Legion, for example. Uh, I will show you. Like this kill here, for example. Gul'dan... There was a mage, but almost exclusively because he needed a mage. <laughs> because he needed to, to spell steal something in a mythic only phase, like a shield, a bulwark or whatever. If you didn't have the mage, you couldn't kill mythical down. So you needed the mage. But otherwise, uh, mage wasn't actually that good in Night Hold. It was not that great. It was also not good, that good on Helia. I don't even know if they had a mage on Helia. Not sure if there was even one in the raid. Oh, actually, there was one in the, in the raid because of uh, Scribe, right? Oh, no, it's not even Scribe. What did Scribe play? Oh, he played Shadow Priest. I forgot. Of course he played Shadow Priest. I think we also had Kristen play... Oh, no, Kristen played Paladin. Did we have a mage? Oh, no, Kristen did play mage. I mean, I can't believe Vicklund died in phase one. What did he do? <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. Didn't get healed. <laughs> Didn't use shield, though? Where, where's the shield? I didn't see a shield being casted. Wow, what about dispersion, shield, anything? No? All right, I see how it is. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, Mage was also not that good in Emerald Nightmare. Let me, let me think. I think there were quite a few times where mages weren't that good, honestly. 
Like, I definitely remember mages not being that good in, in, in a few tiers. We still almost always had a mage because we had mage players that were good players. At least back then when I was uh, in good guilds. We, I would definitely remember bringing mages even if they weren't that good, just because that's the only thing they played. Back then, multiclassing wasn't really that big of a thing anyway. Like, we had people that only played mage, or people that only played uh, something. Yeah. Echo didn't bring Echo and Liquid. I think didn't bring a mage for Dreadlords, Lords of Dread. Even though they had intellect buff, right? Already, like <laughs> that. <laughs> Girl, you know what I mean. Classicking was at its worst in RFC. What's RFC? RFC. What's that again? The, the only, like, the the time where I remember class decking being really, really bad was Dragon, now what is it called, um, Dar, Drag, oh, shit. Spine of Deathwing and Deathwing, what's, what's it called? Dragon Soul? Dragon Soul, yeah. It was really bad. Yeah, and Dragon Soul, it was, it was, it was horrible, but... The reasoning for that was because of the fucking legendary from Firelands, like the legendary stuff. Well, and Rogue was broken, I guess. <laughs> yeah, this is Spine of Deathwing. <laughs> they had one, two, three, four, five, six rogues, and one, two, three, four, five mages. That's quite a lot. What is the color of these two classes? Is that rogue? No, I mean, uh, hunter? What is this? What is this class? Monk? No, what is it? This is confusing me. Is there a different UI? No, it's just all the same UI. Is it hunter? Evoker, yeah. Pets? No, I'm talking... It's not pets. These are two players. They just have a very l weird color in this ray frame. And I don't know what it is. It might be hunters. It's definitely not pets. This is a pet. No way, he just... Did he just open his inventory to use a pot? <laughs> no way! <laughs> nice. God, this bus was just so bad. Also, who plays with a healing meter and no damage meter? What is this? Unbelievable. Use all the these do you have? Hellstone, 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 use rage stand, redition. <laughs> I love this. Power aura or whatever it is. Oh no, this oh no, it's not a weak aura. It's literally just uh, it's um, uh, 
sub subtitles. Man, I thought it's a week or a popping up in the middle of the screen, but it's just subtitles. <laughs> Anyway. I, I can't believe... Oh. I can't believe I didn't get my invite. To my solo shuffle. Before I had to leave. Now, week hours weren't really a thing back then. Actually, I'm not sure. This was um, Dragon Soul? You definitely had something like week hours. Like, tell me when and power auras. I'm not sure if week hours were already a thing. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave you for today. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out. Um, I might stream a bit later on my stealth account. If you know, you know. Okay, I'm just going to say it, okay? My stealth account is called stealth underscore Nagura. Give it a follow if you want to watch. <laughs> Not too many people, though. We need to be uh, a small group of people so we can, uh, you know, have a good time. Yeah? Write it down. Note it. Okay? See you later. And otherwise, I'll see you guys tomorrow for some more World of Warcraft. So, thank you so much for watching. Have a nice rest of your day. And I'll see you tomorrow for more Dragonflight beta, okay? <laughs> Let's host some of you. Hmm, let's see him. Kadriel is playing WoW! Oh, we're totally hosting Kadriel. They died! I love Kadriel. I always watch the stream whenever I don't know what else to do. So when I'm like really bored, I don't know. I literally don't have any other things to do. I'll watch okay, Pedro. I know how to win now. I know how to beat the Russians. I know how to beat the Russians. Sometimes I think. Sometimes I think I have a stream open twice because he always repeats himself. <laughs> I love to have a Kadrel echo. In the background, you know. I know it now. I know it now. Terry I know it now. Legendary. I know it now. Legendary subscriber. Everyone give Terry Bellis some pulse. Can't wait to watch rain collapse. What's gonna do? Just fire the captain. I'm sorry, but the driver is still living. Me ignores me, fanatic. Army comes to end your body. I will always be your adversary. You should be very worried. Can't work here. No. 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 Can't Thank you so much for 13 months for the, by the way, do nurse. I'm pretty sure I didn't say that, and I'm so sorry. I hope you're still here. Thank you, dinner. Yeah, we have to wait for the Moonkin rework to... ...to come in before we can continue to play Moonkin. It's gonna happen soon, though. Hopefully. Kadrill is playing some Alterac Valley. God, I remember Alterac... Oh, wait, he's actually playing Paladin. Dude, I used to play Paladin.